Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. This is the vivacious, vicious Vicky. If nobody knows who I am, I feel so bad for you. But with that being said, take a seat, because you're listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Hello! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Jenks, I'm super happy to be back to Can Crushers. We had essentially 10 days off. We recorded a little bit off schedule. Da-da-da-da-da. We're on our normal schedule. Let's fucking go. I got a lot to talk about. Yeah, baby. You have a lot to talk about. What you got to talk about? What, well, how, how's the Mark the Mark? First off and foremost, I miss you. I love you. Hello. This is the, the co-host. I miss you. Of I Pope, love you. Sir Michael yeah. Jenks. Don't forget, tomorrow night, as you saw a post last night, I'm going to be the ring announcer of ring announcers at High Ground Pro Wrestling once again, Road to Survival. Do you believe the poster they made for me? I don't, you know, but it makes sense. You are the centerpiece, the main attraction for the entire show. I, 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 I you. you're welcome. I'm just saying. Thank you. Somebody's finally coming around to it. Somebody is. I'll take my 20 bucks after the show. It's you. <laughs> Not else. Side note, it's a great show. Mixed tag team matches, a, a lot going on at this show. So if you're in and around the Scranton area, a.k.a. Mayfield, Falcon's Nest, tomorrow doors open at 6.30, bell time at 7. I'm going to be there shaking hand, kissing babies, meeting women. No, not at all. Just hanging out, being a professional wrestler, ring announcer. <laughs> Stop by and say hi, but enjoy the professional wrestling for the for the most part. And deal with my ring announcing. Come for the wrestling, stay for Mark. That's just the way, <laughs> the name of the game. God damn it. You should be my publicist. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on it. I'll, I'll get you some, pu- I'll get you some good opportunities. Good. We, we got to market the shit out of you. We, we do. I agree. <laughs> so it could be story time with Mark, or we could let everybody linger on that and you go first this week. I, I don't care. Well, let's. I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's let everybody linger a little bit. They've been waiting so long to hear your sultry voice anyway, so let's give them a couple more minutes. I got nothing major going on. I'm tired of shit. That's all I got fucking going on this week. I got nothing. It's not even minutes, then. It's going to be seconds. It's going to be seconds. I'm just tired of shit. Had a rough night a couple nights ago. I have not recovered because apparently I'm 95 and... If you're you drinking Monday, coffee during the podcast, right? It's decaf, but yeah. So you're ready to go to bed as soon as this is over. I did, the shit up I, and let's go to bed. Yeah, so this is one of the first cups of decaf I've had in a very long time. And I you enjoy it? In. No, God, no. That's why I stopped drinking coffee altogether. Because right. I, I started drinking the decaf because I had to give up the regular caffeinated coffee. Fair. But now that I go to decaf it was fine for a while and then it just tasted like straight ass it was horse shit it it tastes like shit so and i'd have to put honey i'd have to put creamer anything to help it get down like this i'm struggling with this cup but i gave it up after that and now first one i've had in a while it's still not that good but i just needed an extra kick just a couple couple grams of calf milligrams of caffeine just to kind of Punch me so I'm more lively for the podcast today. But you, you should probably be drinking one of your Circle Energy ones or something. I'm at it. I'm down to the last two 
Time order. So I had them up. That's and I saw they stole my idea for the circle holders. So now I'm not happy about that. But down the last two, I'm looking at them now. I will not be purchasing the lemonade ones, any flavor of them again, because I thought they tasted what? they tasted so much like just plastic or like very artificial flavoring. Very artificially. Like, yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it. I. That's what I'm down to is two uh, lemonades right now. And I'm like, I, highly disappointed. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm highly disappointed. I am a lemon, lemonade fanatic. A That's lemon. actually what I have in mind. I have blackberry lemonade in mine right now. See, I didn't get the blackberry lemonade one before. I think this one is strawberry lemonade. Oh, it might be. So, strawberry lemonade is horrible within itself. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's not. It's not go to three year old face right there. It, did. <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty fantastic, guys. You missed out on that one. But yeah, I'm struggling on circle bottles, but I'm looking at them. I'm trying to figure out the best best one I'm gonna do here. That's all I'm trying to figure out right now. And I hate to say it, a lot of it's gonna be the unsweetened stuff. I may be going unsweetened here. I don't knock those. I have. I, it was between the lemonade. Right now, I literally just tapped this one, like, two yeah. seconds before coming on. So it's a blackberry lemonade, or I have a uh, cucumber mint, which is... I uh, saw that one. Um, yeah. And I've had it before, but it was like, which one do I want? I think I'm taking the cucumber mint to wrestling tomorrow with me, because that's... There's no after pucker, there's no maybe, like, plasticky taste, or it, it is a solid... Game changer that keeps your throat good to go when you're a ring announcer at high ground professional wrestling, which is very important. Right, you need to you need to keep those cockles nice and hydrated, nice and uh, ready to go. So, I'm getting that one. I'm hoping it's good. So you you've had it. It's good. Oh, I've had it millions of times. We have our first fucking fly in the house now. I'm pissed off. <laughs> Literally just came in the house right now. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, I, I have not had that, uh, unfortunate luxury yet. There's none in my house, so I'm happy about that. Dogs. Dogs. You just blaming the dogs on that one? No, I'm probably blaming myself, because, <laughs> whatever. I, I was going to say. It. As long as it doesn't look at me the whole time, I'll get it. Leave the, leave the pups out of this, man. They didn't do anything. Uh, the pups did nothing. It's no. I, all right. I get it. All right, well. It's we had my we had my time. What's the what's the story time? So everybody knows. Last week I went to '80s Wrestling Con. It, essentially, let me just ballpark this so nobody like where the fuck is this place? It's around Newark, okay? okay. Close enough. Boom. Everybody knows Newark. Um, the place we stayed was amazing. The English professor did a wonderful job on that. The con itself was awesome. Talked to the Killer Bees. They remembered us. Talked to the Beverly Brothers. Uh, everybody saw the picture. Talked to Teal Piper. So that's yeah. something really cool. Put a little uh, pin in that yeah. for later down the line, hopefully. Uh, and just mingled. Talked to other people. Had podcasts. The Dudes with Attitude. Uh, Joe Panther III was there. Shout yeah. out to him. We kind of... And I don't know why the hell I didn't get a picture with him because I really like the kid. He, he's a kid, meaning he's the same age as me, roughly. But he's he, he's a good guy. Um, I really like him, so we kind of mingled a little bit and just just had a fun, relaxing, for the most part, dun, 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 weekend of wrestling. We ate great food. We went to John's aunt's bakery uh, in Sayreville, where Bon Jovi is from. Okay, yeah, that's the, yeah. Nice ride. On the way there, this isn't the story yet. On the way there, and I don't I haven't looked into it, saw a fully engulfed tractor trailer just burning to a crisp because nobody could get to it yet. It <laughs> was the freakiest fucking thing I've ever seen. Now, like again, we're going by like sixty five, seventy, maybe a little faster than that. But you see it, but there's also like a dip. So maybe like the driver got out and was away or something, you know, traffic at one side was at a standstill. This time, the craziest fire I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen house fires there. This was a fucking 900 foot tractor trailer fully engulfed. I was like, Oh my God, I got chills. Oh my God. Crazy. So, uh, prayers to that guy. 
girl, whoever the driver was. Here's where the story starts. All week I had a little something going on downstairs. At first, Friday, it was a tingle. Saturday, I was kind of, I guess I want to say crampy as I had, like, pains all over the place. (sighs) Maybe fast forward a little bit if you get woozy. (laughs) Sunday morning, I wake up, do my normal pee, and I'm a pee shooter all of a sudden with clots of blood coming out. No. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. So we're in Newark. Okay? Ballparking again. We're in Newark. We got to go. What's wrong? Holy fuck, we gotta go. Because Mark has now instantly thought if it reverts back to anything from December and I'm gonna be hanging out at a hospital for a while, I don't need my family to have to drive to New Jersey to get me and or see me. Yeah. Everybody knows it's roughly, from my house to Newark, it's like six hours. But we combined everything. I have to go Newark to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And and Pittsburgh to home. Roughly eight hours. Turned into ten, because I had to stop a few times Mm -hmm. to collect myself. Because, again, keeps fast forwarding if you don't want to hear this. My testicles now on fire. The left one, just <laughs> burning. And I did not, Jenks knows none of this, by the way. His face is better than my three-year-old left face that I did five minutes ago. I am dying in this car. I text the wife. This is what's going on. She's telling me, go to a hospital. I'm like, I, if it's related to anything with what happened, I have a feeling I might be staying. I need to push and get home to get to the hospital. And I do. So I'm now at the hospital about 5 o'clock at night. Of course, it's busier than fuck. Oh. Yeah. It's not life-threatening, so I'm on the back burner. Sit and wait, sit and wait. Awesome, cool. Finally get in. No names or anything, but the PA doctor, after we pee in a cup and we do all this stuff, tells me, You have a twisted testicle, a UTI, and then we're out to check your kidneys to make sure shit didn't back up into there. You ready to stay? Oh, fuck. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, fine and dandy. So, I don't end up staying, though. Okay. He gives me something. I don't know. Again, I don't know drugs. I don't know good drugs. I don't know bad drugs. Whatever he gave me, I was walking like Teddy Long out of the hospital. I was, <laughs> I was happy. But I'm now worried because if you look up twisted testicle, within six days, if you don't have surgery, you're Tommy Dreamer for the guys. Okay. Well, now I'm scared because I actually did the homework. Are you yeah. kidding me? This is going on in my life right now, too. This is unbelievable. Nonetheless, they gave me some drugs to go home. Make sure you see your normal doctor tomorrow. Call uh, urology, all that stuff. Go to work. I drive Monday because it was late. I'm not calling my boss late at night to say I'm not coming to work and then boning the guys. So I get to work. I explain to the guys still having my hospital band on forgetting to take that off just to get home they're like are you fucking kidding me i'm like oh yeah sorry (laughs) completely ripped it off at work they're like you're driving all day do your thing okay get a phone call from the urologist so he finally looks at the labs it's not a twisted testicle okay so i don't need surgery thank god thank god but this is him telling me this before i did my homework okay I'm mm-hmm. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even know surgery. I'm telling him this. I'm like, I didn't even know surgery was a part of all of this. He's like, yeah, you didn't do any research? I'm like, no. He's like, you should probably do research on your shit that's wrong with you. I'm like, I didn't know I had a twisted testicle. Go to find out I have a blockage down there, okay? Mm-hmm. 
not a kidney stone or anything like that, just a straight up blockage and kind of a beat up testicle, essentially. Okay. Where, how, what, I don't know. I didn't get in the ring any of the days. The urologist, I know him, but he's like a personal friend of the family for my older generations, like my aunts and uncles. Drink with him. I'll put it that way. Like, so right. I know him enough. He's like, this could have been happening work. It's an extended injury. Da, 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 da. Prove it to get any of that good fucking luck. Okay, fine and dandy. What do I need to do? He's like, listen, I called the, uh, the prescription center. Da, 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 da. Go down and they're going to give you a pill you're going to take for three days. And essentially, it's going to be like Drano. Oh, my Again, God. Yeah, I know this guy. <laughs> so he's blatantly telling me, he's like, it's going to be like Drano cleaning your shit out. This is fucking phenomenal. This is horrible news. What is going on? Take it Monday night. Got sick to my stomach. Just mm. legit Drano. And it's a pill form. Thank oh God my. it wasn't a liquid. God. Tuesday, it's starting to feel a little better. Wednesday, eh. Thursday, it is like a cup of coffee when I'm peeing now. So whatever it did, it broke loose and it drained it. Oh, my God. Uh. Back to today, still some soreness, and he said that could be for a while. We're going to wait till the kind of infection gets away, which is essentially 10 days of pills that I'm on, three of the Drano, and then another week of less Drano, maybe the works or whatever the hell <laughs> the other type of stuff they use. I don't know. So I got to go, I got to go back to see my normal doctor and kind of do another scan to see what's going on in there. Um, yeah, that's been my week. Oh my God. I, <laughs> so, I told so. you, I said, before we started recording, I said one time, I just want to come on and say, I played video games and I barely breathed. This week and I was fine in a good in a good sense oh. like, I feel bad kind of cut I don't want to say I cut the trip short because we we did run back to John's aunt because they had a, a suitcase of cookies and biscuit and other things for us to bring home for both families da, 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 da. but they wanted us to have like lunch with I'm like John he's like I know I know but you know you go to an Italian family yeah it an in and out minimal of an hour. Yep. So we left at like seven. By the time we got there, it was like seven thirty. We only really got on the road eight thirty quarter to nine. You know, add all these hours. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah. Oh my Sunday. god. <laughs> Sunday was not a fun day for you. That's you know, supposed to go to a Legion baseball meeting because. <sighs> listen, I didn't go because I was in the hospital. Yeah. Which is all fine and dandy. They asked me to be the PA announcer, did, 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 did all this other stuff for the big regional tournament that's down here every couple of years. Uh, Meadville and everybody plays in it as yeah. well. It gets thrown back and forth. I also didn't know if I didn't show up, um, I got voted on the board. So now I am <laughs> 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 make time for that now. Well, I'm happy to. I, I'm, I'm joking about that. This is something – I'm a strong component uh, of the Legion program, like 10 miles away, St. Mary's. It's been in the family. Family has coached. Family has ran it, this, that, and the other thing. I played where in my hometown of Ridgeway, but have always, like, kind of dabbled with them, doing stuff yeah. with them. Um, so I'm really happy. I am happy to kind of be on the board, be on the staff, and do all this, so – Super excited for that. It, it's like 16 games in a matter of like fucking 13 days, and then the tournament comes, and that's a five-day tournament. But it's cool. I'm excited for that. It, it's radio. It's not radio as in like, you know, radio yeah. you listen to. It's right. announcing. It's this. It's that. It's, it's in-house stuff, but it's still just being there. That's awesome. At so, least you got some good out of uh, Sunday versus – even though that's another being on a board is probably another kick in the nuts uh, besides that, but literally, <laughs> literally, 
Jesus Christ, man. Uh, right? Since December, it's been a fucking shit show with this body of mine. It's fighting. It's rebelling on you. It's having its own midlife crisis right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I thought the same thing. But oh I, I just... God. What, so let me ask you this. Yeah. Would you have done the same thing? Like, if you're in... Uh, maybe, like, a plane ride's a different thing. But if you're eight hours away and you know you can drive home, just bear with the pain. Or do you go? Do you get that worried... And, like, should I have gone to a hospital in Newark? And then I could still legit be in Newark right now. <sighs> Listen, Kelly doesn't like driving. The only city Kelly doesn't mind driving in is Parts Unknown, which is eerie, guys. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Um, she hates driving in Pittsburgh. Fucking Newark was 18 rows on one side going every which way. She's not coming to see me in Newark. I honestly, I would have tried to go home. I yeah. would have because it's not. I'm in a different piece, part of my life than you are. So for me, it would have been more about a comfort and it would have been like, okay, so if the family needs to come see me, they can come to Erie, whatever the hospital's here. But for me, it's like, I, it's also a little bit of the, I can make it. I know it's exactly looks that. bad right now. I'm all right. I'm, I'm all right. right. I can do this. I'm still walking. And it's that, it, it's that family mentality of, you might have some shit going on, but you're going to fight through it because you have things to do and people see and all that bullshit. And for you, you had eight hours to get back. You had to drive eight hours to get back home. So your ass was going, it's going to happen. I'll deal with it when I get to the house. And so I think for me, it's a comfort thing. I would have just came home just to be comfortable. Yeah. It would have been a shitty ride. Was, and I'm sure it was a one, shitty it was ride. One, yeah. It was six to one, half a dozen. The other. It was family, exactly. but it was also, I need to be home. If something's going to happen, let it be happening at home. Yeah. There's no way it's going to happen in Newark, New Jersey. That's and anything against Newark, by the way. It, it treated nothing against it, but. <laughs> Friday and Saturday. <laughs> and as we left really quick on Sunday. But. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I. I, I win. You. Yeah, you win. You win everything. I mean, I didn't have any ailments. I just didn't have a good night's sleep the one night. But good God almighty. Yeah. So that's that. And, and I did come back around. I had a couple baseball, softball games. So it was a nice week. So I got a couple baseball, softball games thrown in the mix. Um, as I said to you prior to recording, man, I can't get enough of this NCAA. You know, it's a regional tournament right now. I'm flipping yeah. back and forth between essentially the Big Ten watching – Right now, uh, Northwestern and Nebraska is on, so you guys really give two shits. But also the ACC network, because Pitt's there, but I think I really like Florida State, which that hurts my mouth for saying it, <laughs> but they play a different ball. And it, it's just, I, I really am engulfed into this, and I really wish, in doing some homework, I saw that there is like a professional softball team league out there, but it's mm. few and far between. Man, you know how much we are advocates of women and everything on here. There's a lot of talent. It's I'm not saying being wasted because they're going on doing whatever they're doing in degrees and everything. I would pay, and I said this on the radio yesterday, and I got local people coming up and you know sending me some ha ha has or whatever. Um, I would probably buy season tickets. I am so much in love with softball. I don't know if it's the quickness of the game now, or maybe I'm yeah. just ready or, or whatever, but shit, these girls are good. Yeah, I was watching, was it last year? There was a couple, no, it was a few years ago, because I remember now I make it a point to watch it. There was a couple highlights that I saw on the Tiki Talk where they were just web gems. Just fucking laying out for balls, and then just the way they were playing them, I couldn't believe it. Was, the one was a pitcher who pitched, literally took a dive in the infield, got the out. I was like, holy shit! And it was like instant, right back and forth. So softball is an underrated sport in its own right. Really? So yeah, it really is. So I don't blame you one bit for that. I'd watch it. I didn't even realize it was already. Tourney time, I guess it didn't even click in my head. It's mid-May, so yeah, it would be. 
but didn't even click in my head. So I'm going to have to turn it on when we're done here. But holy crap. A shit ton of championships. If you're not doing anything tomorrow, which I know you are, but they're later on in the evening. Shit ton of championships being played tomorrow. So yeah, make sure, or today as you guys are listening, make sure you check them out. Um, yeah, if you have the Big Ten ACC network, which essentially yeah, most people that have anything anymore, I'm watching it on the Roku. So that's yeah. You guys have it. You have ACC. Even if you have YouTube TV, whatever it is, right? You have it. Well, whatever, whatever cable provider, you have it. Watch it because just watching it supports them, grows fandom. Da 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 da. And more money and everything can go towards these women as well, playing an amazing game. Yep. So, um, you talked about a midlife crisis, and I kind of shuddered that around real quick. But that's a great place to go to remind everybody that is May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes, it is. Um, guys, we'll give you the number again. Call or text 988 if you're having any thoughts on anything. You just need to talk to somebody. Our email's also open that, you know, we'll get it and see it and we'll write back to you. Check out NAMI.org, BetterHealth.com, or Lifestyle, Lifespan.org as well. And just know everybody's there. We're there. We're here to listen. You're enough. We love you. I'm not powering through this this week because you're going to hear it again next week and week after and everything. But just know that we're here. Um, how's yours doing? It's doing good. You know, it's you get through things on a week to week basis where you try to get you pull yourself together and you can power through. But, you know, for the most part, it's good. Um, I would I would agree with Mark. You need to be there. If you need anything, reach out. There's tons of people that are available for you within your own family or within your friend group that you may consider family, just think about reaching out to them and be with them and they will be there for you. How is your mental health this week? I know you've been through a lot, but uh, Monday I was horrible and not knowing what was going on. I was horrible. The curtain open wide or whatever you want to say. I was horrible. I, I was in that shell again. And then it honestly took, the guys at work because they saw, you know, just, hey, one nut or the, and I know whatever, comedy is the best thing for me. Make yeah. fun of me, do whatever. It lightens me up. It gets me out of my own head. Um, yeah, whatever. How am I am now? Right now I'm perfect. I'm awesome. Yeah. And it took those steps just to kind of, hey, this, that, and the other thing. Monday, after the uh, urologist called, I I had no clue what was going on in my life. And then we started the Drano process. That gave me a little bit of a up. Tuesday, hmm, Wednesday, okay. Thursday, when I'm peeing oil, I'm great. Today, I'm fucking amazing. Right. Tomorrow, though, I'm going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> Drano's out of your system. You're ring announcing. You're back in your home away from home. Right. So, yeah, I don't blame it, you. It, if anything, and this is, and I probably should have learned this in December when I had that scare to this or whatever. It literally just needs to be one day at a time, get or or hours at a time. Because look, I, I'm yeah. fighting to get from new work to home to, to get stuff taken care of to get back to the family. To, to, to just take it as it comes. That's yeah. what I learned this week. Yeah. Well, that's going to be the that's the important thing. Take it as you take it as it comes, but also leave the past where it was. New York. Listen, leave it in New York. New York. I don't know why I said New York, but leave it. Leave it in the past. Things happen all the time. You're gonna make mistakes. Things. You're gonna get sideswiped. You're gonna be thrown off your game. Everything under the sun, right? You can beat yourself up for five minutes and then just move on because there's nothing. You can't change the past. There's no time travel. There's nothing there. And even if you did time travel, it changes everything in the future and it makes it worse. So just take it as it is. Sit there for five minutes. You want to beat yourself up? Take five minutes. Do it. But walk away from it. That's the one thing I've learned in the past eight months is I used to sit, beat myself up for weeks on end about every little thing, 
anything I did wrong in my personal life versus work, yada, yada, yada. It takes a toll on you. Take five minutes, have it out. Just lose your mind about it if you want. When that five minutes is over, you say, all right, time to nut up or shut up, and then you just move on. Terrible way to say it. I didn't mean to bring it back. Actually, I did not mean to bring it back to there. I brought in Zombieland, but hey, you know what? It worked. Uh, but <laughs> you take it. Not up or shut up. That's why I have to this. But it's more or less, okay, you've taken it on the chin. It's happened. There's going to be consequences. There's always a consequence for your actions. That's fine. But just move forward. You will figure out the way to get to get yourself through it. You're it's given not, the tools. You're given the you, tools. You're given the tools. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's rough as hell. But you are given the tools, and honestly, you're an amazing human being, whether you believe it or not, that you can get through anything. And you just need to take it, like Mark said, one step at a time. Yep. Take what comes up, deal with it, move on to the next step. You'll get onto the other side. And it'll be fine. Yeah, you really will. All right, let's transition into wrestling. 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 Yes. Wrestling. That's what we do the best, we think. I don't, we don't know. Uh, I'm not admitting anything like that. Not at all. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, you should not. Um, <laughs> wow, we'll get, thanks. We'll get there. <laughs> there goes my mental health for that. <laughs> what did you see that made you go, oh, wow, this week in wrestling? <laughs> My mind's a shot. Don't worry about it. I'd suck. Uh, <laughs> wow in wrestling. Hey, uh, I don't think it's a wow, but you know what? Props to all the WWE superstars that showed up during the NFL schedule releases this week. Um, wow. This is commentate. Uh, have you, did you see the Cleveland Browns one where it was a wrestling show and Brownie the Elf was just beating up a bunch of gimmicked team wrestlers who they would be like i think Steelers were like the yinzer yeller or something like that there was the soup master or the chili master from cincinnati and he just was a sloppy cat or something like that i can't remember what his exact name was i'll have to go watch this now you gotta watch it was actually very i saw, this, I saw a tiktok and instagram of like uh, wrestling was just so engulfed in the nw in the nwa no fucking <laughs> shit in the nfl <laughs> it was heavily involved seth freaking rollins was a restaurant worker in the Bears video, so that was fantastic. So uh, that pop that just came to my mind today. Those were fantastic. So props out to all the wrestlers that got out there and were part of their team's videos. And that, and uh, not a shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they didn't have any wrestlers in theirs, and I was kind of disappointed in it. So ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, even though it was a schedule release, uh, I'll think about it a little bit more. But did you see anything that popped out from your perspective? The only I'm, I'm super excited that the Crockett Cup's coming back, and yeah, okay. I saw the tickets are on sale. I posted that if you want to go to Winston Salem, I thought about it, and I'm like, I can't make two trips to Winston Salem. I can't. Um, so that'll probably be a two night watch on on the old Fight Network there. But uh, that's that's my that's my uh, childhood right there. That that whole tournament is probably one of my favorite tournaments because you just had mass chaos in, in the Crockett Cup. Essentially then once the Crockett Cup was over, the King of the Ring kind of took over for that. Um but yeah, I, I'm excited that the Crockett Cup's coming back. So if you can get to Winston Salem and buy the tickets, I I posted it, just scroll through Facebook. You'll buy tickets, but they were going faster than shit. Oh yeah. Other tickets sixty five thousand people at Wembley already for AEW. That was wild. When I heard that, do you think they get 80? I, and they got three have, months. They have, yeah, time. They have three months to get 80,000. I'd pull the trigger to go now, but I, again, that's farther than Winston Salem. It is. I didn't realize <laughs> that. That we were, that we were still home by the British air, but no, uh, no, but seriously, that is amazing. I think that blows a lot of people's estimates or high-end estimates or those that were very pessimistic that said, oh, they're not going to do more than 15. First time in England? Oh, hell yeah, they're going to get a shit ton. They're globally globally, no, globally known. There we go. Words. They're highly advertised over there. They're highly liked over there. This is going to be big. Um, and it's turned out to be a very big show. So, props to them. With that amount of ticket sales, I think 
because Tony has made an announcement that there's going to be an announcement. We'll we'll talk a lot yeah. about AEW this week. We really will because the last couple of weeks we've been skimming over it. We'll give it to own segment and everything. But Tony's announcement was, "Hey, we're doing good. Ticket sales are great, and I have a bigger announcement next week." So he had an announcement that he had an announcement. All right, whatever. Right on that, I think he looked at the ticket sales and how this so well is doing at Wembley and what to expect. You saw that now he's tackling bigger venues in America now. He's going from Jenks Arena in Boston to one of the biggest, the Boston fucking garden. Yeah. And that's huge. And I hope he crushes it. Yeah. Do you? I hope he crushes it too. And I honestly anticipate he will. He's yeah. going to start doing these larger venues. When do we see the first football stadium show? The first stadium show. Oh, we see in, we saw that. They've been doing them in Jacksonville all I'm kidding. Well, I'm yeah, kidding. no. <laughs> We're going to see the one in Wembley, I guess, if you technically count the NFL games that have been played there. But in America, when do we see that first show? Because honestly, it would probably be, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a bold prediction already 20, for 2024. I'm going to jump the gun. Allegiant Stadium next May, double or nothing. I could see it happening because if Wembley is 60,000 strong right now, we're on the same page. I completely understand where you're going with this. Yeah. If Wembley's 60,000 strong now, the audience is there. It will be here in America and they're not going to do it in middle of winter. So might as well do it. Your first chance at very nice weather. It's still a dome and Las Vegas is your second home. What a way, what a way to do it is in Las Vegas. First big show. And you have all these other – if people are on the fence, you have all these other events coming up. Wembley, followed by the week after of All Out, followed by everything to come the rest of the year to continue to build. And listen, the other thing that's coming around is dark and dark elevation gone. We don't know how, for how long, if it is forever, whatever, whatever. Um, you're going to get your Saturday night show – what the fuck's it called off the top of your head? You know, collision? Yeah, collision. collision. Yeah. That's going to be coming. I think that opens the doors to the bigger stadiums. And I'm not saying that show, but right. for your pay-per-views, I think that is where then everybody's like, oh, shit, they're getting legit footing. And I know it's been five years or whatever, but they're getting legit footing that they have really two televised TV sh- three televised TV shows, if you call Rampage one. Um and I'm not knocking it because we have to talk about something that happened on Rampage a couple weeks ago. Listen, we're we're all over the board to cover stuff on AEW this week. But I think it opens up more for people to say, holy shit, this is where it's going to go. And that Wembley one is a huge one because that's the international market. Yep. People from just not England are going to that. People yep. from America are going over. England's going over. But you have all those other continents, countries, da 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 or going to trickle to England. This is going to be their – I'm going to compare, so don't jump on me. Their precursor, like WrestleMania, that mm-hmm. they're going to be able to do these big-ass shows once, twice a year, a la WrestleMania, a la SummerSlam. Yep. And then they'll throw the other ones in the Boston Garden, in – I was going to say the Igloo because I'll always call it the Igloo. But in uh, PPG Paints Arena or, or in like places like that to get the bigger 20 to 30 crowd. Yeah. Comes, and you know what I mean? You know, boom. So I, I love it. I really do. Am I that much in my EW mark? Probably. Probably. I, I'll, I will say yes, probably. But they, they, they know what they're doing. Oh, you they tack- do. Rome wasn't built today. You take it slow and you build it out. This isn't like when and you guys can take the hate, throw the hate on here. This isn't like WCW where we rush into things. We're trying to build it up consistently. Listen, I hate to say it. They've already outsold what they did in their biggest night in the Georgia Dome back in 98 when Goldberg won the title. They only did 45 in the Georgia Dome. And you can't tell me they couldn't have got 60 to 80. But, hey, it was Monday Night Nitro, so it was what it was. But they are going to do 
They've already outsold that. They're building themselves up. They've built the brand. They've understood what they can bring in, how they can do it. They understand that the international market is there for this. And to your point, they're testing it on a neutral soil. They've never stepped foot on the continent of Europe. And if their presence is strong there, it will be strong in America. So, yes, there's going to be one to two big shows that they're going to do every year. And it'll be in summertime. It will be. It, it could be a, in, it, it would make sense. Forbidden Door could end up being one of those shows just to make a monumental mark just because of the nature of it. It's two companies coming together to have a wrestling show. You get $100,000, $1,000 1, people, and I, I will always say I would love to see a wrestling show in, like, the big house yeah. at, at Michigan oh, yeah. or at – Penn State, Ohio, yeah, Ohio State, State Stadium, Stadium. yeah, yeah, there, yeah, seating's crowded, this, that, and the other thing, but football does, Penn State does 150000 weekly mm-hmm. for a game. Oh, they yeah. have everything for you. Clearly in Pennsylvania, it has to happen in July, so, <laughs> because that's the only time that you know that you're not going to get snow. That's it, that's exactly I'm it. I'm fucking wood. If you want anything in the north to happen, you have to do it from, uh, we'll say May, end of May to about yeah, the May, last day of beginning May. of September. Yeah. <laughs> but I would love somebody to go to one of these colleges and sell one out. I, have, I don't give a shit oh, if it's it Impact easily. or something. Yeah, but that would be so fucking cool. Well, they already sell out the they already sell out the arenas at the colleges. Right. Like, WWE's been going to South Carolina, University of South Carolina for a long time. AEW, I know, has trickled into some of those arenas. Peterson's a good example. Even though the Peterson's not that big, it's still an example for Pitt. Yeah. They're going to fill it out. out. Yeah. There. Yeah, exactly. So they're going to they're gonna fill them out. Just take the time. I think college stadiums are underappreciated and underutilized because, A, there might be some logistics with sports in that. You could do it in the summertime when there's not many teams there. I don't know how it works with football, how long they practice or whatnot, but there's an opportunity there that you can take advantage and say, let's drop this in the big house for a week Again, and let if, us go. If Michigan's getting a boatload of money, they'll be like, hey, football team, you're using the practice field this for field. this week. Yeah, you're not going to use the big house for it. Yeah. Because we just got a billion dollars from AEW to come here. I'm just saying it might be sweet to see. I know it'll never happen in South Bend, but touchdown Jesus standing right over the other ring, just – Hallelujah with the ring. What a visual. What a visual. Have you ever been? No, I haven't. We drove by it when Ethan was on our trip to Chicago one time. We swung in. Um, It's pretty cool. I've never been inside. Yeah. But hopefully that changes this year when oh. I find out. Because Pitt plays there this year. Well, that's fair. And it was, do you want the West Virginia game or the Notre Dame game? Both. Listen, I know I'm lower on the totem pole of uh, season ticket holders. Right. So West Virginia is an hour away. You know, Notre Dame's a little bit farther away. I said, make the Notre Dame number one for me, West Virginia number two. Mm-hmm. So I you never know. West, yeah. Well, well, I could get that game. I could have also picked Florida or North Carolina. Again, that's a much <laughs> farther trip. Maybe next year or a couple of years. All right. So do you want to start off with a loss or do you want to start off with AEW? <laughs> <laughs> Told you feeling good. Let's uh let's do AEW. Uh you know, we need to give it a little bit longer segment this week, so let's start off with AEW. Yeah, because essentially we're gonna talk about backlash and brief over the shows because the shows were filler, so yeah, yes. All right. You know what? Screw it. Just you don't. We don't even need sponsors. Go buy something from Collar and Elbow and you <laughs> use our promo code. You know it by now. Get a hold Hand of us. Crushers, come on, guys. We got yeah. this. Get a hold of us on all our socials. You subscribed already and all of that cool stuff. Um, also, I say the beginning of June. We look for Ask Hand Crushers. We get past. I like it. We get past this big pay per view that's coming up. And then we go in the beginning of June for Ask Can't Crusher. So if you want to start trickling them in, that would be phenomenal. So there you go. That's your shout out. All right. We'll be back with AEW. Wrestling. 
a love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Donnie Bambino, one half of the Bad Fellas, and you're listening to Can Crushers. I don't know how you're listening to it, but I'll tell you what, you better leave a five star or I'll come visit you, and you don't want me knocking at your door. And welcome back to Can Crushers, Mark and Mike. Here to talk and give some love to AEW. Listen, don't think we're going to be on the same page of notes or anything like that. We're going to be all over the board because we essentially have two weeks of AEW to talk about. But we have to start with one thing. And I don't care where we throw it in. We have to start with the Hardy Compound. It made its triumphant debut, <laughs> or return, sorry, return. Sure. Debut on Rampage. Rampage. That's true. It hasn't been on Rampage yet. I'm trying to remember, there was one during the pandemic, right, where yeah. they went? Yeah, because it was Jericho and, was it Jericho and Matt Hardy at that yeah, time? Jeff was not part of it. Jeff I was not because he was still in WWE at that point. Right. Yeah, because yeah, it was right around when Matt first came into the company, so... Yeah. But yeah, it was so more long. of a deletion one. Because isn't that, I get these so fucked up. When was he riding the tractor when he was cutting grass? Was that WWE or Impact or what compound was that? Well, they're all the same compound. No, I know that. they're but, all the same. But he was, when did he ride the, he, he was going to run somebody over on the tractor? Was that was, yeah, that, that had to have been WWE maybe. Yeah, because somebody was battling him with a lawnmower, like a push mower at that point. So right. I think that was WWE. Okay. I think that was WWE. Well, maybe now, nah, God damn it, now it's probably Jericho. These are all smushed together. Am I about to spend tomorrow looking up all of these just to rewatch the insanity that... Apparently you have nothing to do tomorrow, and you're lying to me about everything. I'm you- not, but... Oh, my God. I'm, I might just have to... Spend some time after I get home just watching it, watching the mass chaos. I will say I got enjoyment out of this one, but it was the lesser of anything that I remember. These were th- I had a lot of dad moments and awe moments on this one. Yeah. Because the kids chasing Stokely, that was cool. Them running after – well, not running, driving after him in the power wheel – like yeah. Maximus or whatever the hell this kid's name is, um, doing the swanton on so it, these kids that are six or seven are beating the shit out of Stokely. That was funny for me. It really yeah. was. That was hilarious. That was very hilarious. I like the callback of seeing some of the Omega wrestlers with him. Did everybody notice Caprice Coleman was the ref mm. one of the referees. Oh, and, I didn't and, yeah. Okay. He was one of the referees. And um go back and listen once I talked about uh WrestleCade. He, Caprice Coleman started with Hardy in his Omega you would call it backyard wrestling, but listen, check out Omega Wrestling because they toured. They were a legit company making money. Uh that's where Caprice Coleman started. So they gave him a little bit of rub. And the other referee one of Jeff's best friends, and shoot me now because I don't remember his name and I didn't write it down, but was also there. He was the one actually rooting for Matt, saying, come on, Matt, come on, Matt. He also was in Omega as well. So that was cool that they worked uh, a couple of their real-life friends and wrestlers into mm-hmm. this shtick as well. That was a nice callback. I did not pick up, I did not pick up on that whatsoever. So that was interesting because I was – 
Yeah, I don't know how I want to say that because I just didn't pick up on that because it didn't cross my mind. Omega Wrestling never crossed my mind when I was watching it. So, like, well, you're more knowledgeable about the indie scene than I am or anything that goes on in it. So that would make sense that I didn't pick up on it. But that's interesting now. Yeah. And I'll have to double check. I'll have you, double you check definitely, on that. If I'll you go back and watch any of the clips, you know who Caprice Coleman is. He's yeah, probably, do. besides Matt and Jeff, he's probably one of the, well, and Shane Helms as well. Right. He, he clearly wasn't there. But you would recognize Caprice Coleman if I held a pitch up right now and say this was him, right? I definitely would, yeah. Now that you say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just didn't pick up on it at the time. Um, holy shit. Ethan Page was going to set everybody on fire? <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad plan. <laughs> not a bad plan. That's a complete deletion for real. Like, yeah. Holy hell. You can't have a firm deletion without that. Without fire, I guess. So, <laughs> when you let me let me ask you that. Let, well, let's go off of that. If you were in his scenario, would you not think yeah, this the is my only possibility? You're, you're, you've been on this compound for God knows years now. At this point, however fuck long time travels in time, Hardy uh, compound. Would you be like, I need to get the fuck out of here. I'm setting shit on fire. I'm Making a sacrifice. <laughs> Big Bill just took out. way too long with the lighter. That's all. Like, dude, get <laughs> up and set him on fire. Ladies are hard. <laughs> it, it was fun. It, it was it fun. Was. I love um, Brother Cass is now back. He's healthy. So that's cool to see him do a la Jeff, a la Mick Foley off of the roof to essentially, I don't know, it was snippish, I'll tell you that, as a communication studier, studier, God, as a communications major, student, whatever like that. Um, they were places really fucking quick after a big move. Like, boom, you're off the top of the roof onto everybody, and then two seconds later, oh, we're back in the garage, and everybody's up in the ring fighting. Eh, l- at least give me a pan of everybody walking away to get there. Yeah. Do you think it that was, was a very cinematic uh, match? Right. Do you think that's a casualty of TV time there? They just had like, to, yeah, because that, that was probably, if you would go and you brought this up before we hit the record button again on this segment, did I watch the full-length version? No, because that's probably sitting down watching, like, Dancing with Wolves or something like that. <laughs> well, yeah, when did you think you're going to hear about that movie again? <sighs> Not on Can Crushers, guys, so you never know what's going to happen here. But, uh, yeah, I have to, yeah, would, it, I think it's at least 40 minutes, whatever this Gotta be. unedited unedited version is. But, uh, I'm yeah, I'm half tempted to look that up. But go on. But, yeah, so. It was fun. It did, it did what it needed to do to separate did. everybody and hopefully – I don't know if this is the last hurrah for real for Matt and Jeff to get them over and maybe private party is going to do something. But my big thing is out of all of this, Ethan fucking page better be by himself when he does recover and come back and let him get close to that TNT title Mm -hmm. or the international title or something like that. Because since he has got here, I think he's been wasted. Well, he hasn't had an opportunity to truly show his, show himself. He's been saddled with uh, Dan Lambert, Huskis Pig, and then he's been not saddled with oh, Stokely. Right. Stokely he's with yeah, he's been with the firm. Stokely is a great manager. I'm not going to put anything on Stokely, but he just has been stuck in that in the firm. And the firm had nothing to do after the MJF fallout. Like, it, it just had no meaning. It had no point. They should have closed the doors of the firm. And they should have hard and slammed it. So, Ethan Page, hopefully this is his time to shine. If not, if I'm Ethan Page, I might be looking to go back to him. Well, he can't even go back to Impact now. He's been, he had his heart ripped out by himself. Right. So, it's so – but I think he's so underutilized. What do you – what's the game plan here? If he was the one to beat Orange Cassidy, I think that would be your best move going forward. Because I, I really don't see anybody else that would be good to do that. We could make an argument, but 
do we want to jump right? Like I said, we're not going to break down match by match in order, but right. let's go right into that because I, I love that whole idea because I'm tired of Orange Cassidy. You I are. Never th- it's the same match every week. I don't care. Insert Big Bill. Insert Garcia. They're great matches, but he can never just win a match. It's always a surprise that he wins. It's a roll up here. It's a roll up there. It's a lucky win over somebody. Can the champ fucking decimate somebody one time? He's he's your – Jade is. But he's on a, what, 30 winning streak now? 31, yeah. 32, whatever, of defending like the that. title and whatever. Jade crushes people. Give Orange one. I know he's a little guy. I would have believed it against Daniel, though. Even though I love Daniel Garcia, but Orange could, if Orange would have came out, Slum Dog Millionaire, Orange Crush, Superman Punch, whatever, and not really that fast, guys. Don't throw me under the bus, but maybe like a ten minute match that Orange does everything. It just is. Everybody gets over on him. Oh, he surprises them and wins. I'm getting bored. That's fair. I, I'm i not yet. I do appreciate, but at the same time, I get what you're saying. It can get a little redundant, little kind of, but kind of just dragging on. To your point, though, it would, to me, for Orange Cassidy, it can't be that easy. It can't be that one and done, or that big, big move match that's eight minutes long. He's the guy... It makes more sense for him to have these longer matches because his whole personality and persona is built off this. He has flashes of brilliance, but he's really a sloth when it comes to doing anything else. So he would have the 20, 30 minute matches. Now, if he had like a finisher that wasn't the Superman punch that we just call orange punch. Right. Maybe it's more exciting or maybe it can like beach break does a, pretty good job of coming out of nowhere when it needs to, but he doesn't win matches with it. Right. So how do we get him to a spot where they, he can hit moves that just come seemingly out of nowhere? Like, a, I'm not saying change it to an RKO, don't get on my nerves, but RKO can come out of nowhere, yeah. or a stomp can come out of nowhere, or things of that nature. I mean, I see Canadian destroyers get pulled out of thin air left and right, which they're overdone. But what can we do to get him something that makes sense? But again, in line with his character, he's just not character. His gimmick it doesn't suit a flashier style than what he does in the ring. I, to me, it's more about what's the end game now because that's where I'm interested in it. It's not Orange is coming out. He's going to have a match or whatever. He's great for a couple minutes of comedy. Get you get you going. And that's why I think he fit so well in that first time spot. Oh, agreed. Opening up the show because it got people in the groove. They were laughing. They were having a good time. But now it's the end game. And it's the same thing with Jade, too. Who is the one to beat them? Jade's in another category, however, because there's just no one on the roster that's equipped right now to beat her. Let me interject then. Um, let's go. Are you done with? Are you done? With, first and foremost, let me. Are you done with orange? My yeah. Let me just drop it. The point with orange is now we can play the guessing game because there's still options available to beat Orange Cassidy for the international title. Who and one is return. it? Though? And one did well, return. Let's talk about the one return. That yeah. tool I think should honestly do it. I completely agree because I think that was a monumental return. And if you guys don't know who we're talking about, Miro, he was involved in that fatal four-way last year for the title. He was fantastic in that one. We haven't seen him since. I think it's perfect timing for Miro to come in and be the double at double or nothing and be the one to beat Orange Cassidy. But go but, on. But yep. no, I, 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 Miro full force should you know he walks in he whatever he talked to Tony about maybe in weeks to come we'll find out. Yep. I don't think Miro Orange should be anything but a pay-per-view match first. Let them cross paths. Let them bump into you. Let them let maybe Miro do a disqualification next week 
that Orange gets the win, but Orange gets pissed off or something like that. They do not get in the ring until double or nothing. I even think they get in the ring at double or nothing, and it's a squash match. And Muro just goes over in three Quick. minutes. Yeah. Maybe three minutes. It's not even – you have Orange Cassidy, who's now dealing with lingering injuries. Miro is a beast, a monster that you can play him up as. Pissed off persona. Pissed off persona. He's on his own without his God or his, he's not the Redeemer anymore. This is a perfect scenario where it's a th- two to three minute squash. Miro walks right out with the title. It doesn't hurt Orange. It doesn't hurt him at all. Not hurt Orange at all. Mm-mm. No, not Wrap at all. Wrap back around to this after whatever Orange is doing next, and it'll still be awesome. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So you brought up Jade. Rumors are everywhere that Soraya is going to get somewhat of a big to-do in Wembley. Well, no fucking shit. Yeah. Will Tony pull the trigger and have her beat Jade? Honestly, I'm going to hope not. I agree. Because I don't think she's the one that should beat the streak. I think the huge to-do could be could be a title, could be the women's title. But I don't think you're she should th- be the one throwing, that So you're throwing Soraya and Jamie there. That crowd's going to be split 900 to 900. I know. And that's the point. You imagine how how that crowd would be. That is a big-ass moment. And if Soraya walks out with the title, chef's kiss. If Hader walks out still with the title, Even chef's kiss. It doesn't matter. It's just a big to-do. And it's basically everything you wanted to hype up. If that's the if that is the match for the women's title at that point, that's your main event match. Take my sixty dollars. I will pay it. I will pay it. I'll give it to you in dollars, not even pennies. I will just pay you in dollar bills, and I'll make it rain because that match will be so fucking great just by the atmosphere around it alone. Because the environment, Mark, you know this. The environment makes the match. If oh, yeah. that if that environment is hot. And ready, it's white hot. That match could be an absolute dog shitter, and I'm not saying it will be, but that crowd will eat it up, and it'll make you feel like, oh my god, this was fantastic, this was amazing. And this listen, guys, watch it the next day. Go back and be like, Shoot. what is this? Whoa. Yeah. Well, and I'm gonna say it. You guys can give me crap about it. Hogan and Andre wasn't the greatest wrestling technical piece of all time. Wasn't you know, great Andre, or anything. It wasn't great or anything, but the atmosphere alone made it that way, and the memorable moment that the atmosphere fed off of made it that way. That's all you need. A memory in an atmosphere, and you have an instant thing that lives on probably till way past where our our time on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. agreed. Uh fucking greed. Um I do want to go back to the first match. Man, I'm losing faith in ROH. And I hate to say it. Claudio is your world champ. Now you have Phoenix facing him in a double Jeopardy match. Whoever wins is going to get a a shot at the other person's title. At no point did I think Phoenix was going to get a shot at Claudio's title. Once they named the stipulation of this, I'm like, why the hell? Sorry. Is the BCC now getting a shot at the tag team title? Yeah. And it's Claudio and who? Or is he going to make it a free? I mean, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't mind a free burger roll. Somebody has to kind of rekindle that again because every so often it's nice to see to it. Have New Day just did it. I mean, it's been years now since yeah. they've been, and, and all three of them been separated and everything. It's, oh my God, it's been what, six years since? Yeah. I know they haven't been separated that long, but it's been six years since they used the free bird rule. Yeah. So. I mean, if you're going to do that and, you know, it's Claudio and Danielson that win it, but then any one of the four essentially can defend them, that will be cool because there's so yeah. many different scenarios you can use. But to, where is this going? I have a feeling that 
the BCC is going to get their title match. Well, clearly it's contracted now. They're going to get their title match. Who they're not winning. This is they're going to be broken up by JAS. Da, 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 da. Somebody is going to get in the mix of this, right? I don't think so. You, so you I, think they're getting the tag titles or I they're think, losing? I, losing what? I, I have this. Do you think they're going to get the, they're going to get the tag title shot? Yeah. And do they lose to the Lucha Brothers? No, I think they win. But exactly. It's, yeah, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you were saying, but yeah, I think they win because then you're going to have them all dripping with all of the gold, and that's what exactly you, obviously, what they want. I just, you said you lost faith in ROH. I need some separation. I don't need that ROH. That was better. I don't that need ROH in my, and I, if I, I had this thought earlier this week. And it was on Wednesday night. If I ever wanted a brand split as much as a draft right now, it's in fucking AEW. I need an AEW roster and I need a ROH roster. But they can't do that because the BCC is so ingrained in what they're doing in both that right. they just can't make that they can't make that separation. Is there a way to have two members of the ROH, two of the members of BCC say in ROH and oh. AEW, of course. But it, it's just so, a, ROH just seems so much more like a, I don't know how to describe it, almost like a, just the puppet or like a prop. After, afterthought. An afterthought, that's perfect thought, perfect. It's an afterthought. And it's, hey, we got these shiny belts right here. But they mean absolutely nothing because you hear nothing about hear nothing about us, and we're not getting anything to draw us to an app to watch our wage. So we have to bring all the talent back up here. We have to do the balance, yada yada yada. It's an afterthought. It's just we have the library, and hey, we got these fan. We have nine other belts that we can actually showcase off. Which is sad because a lot of talented individuals hold oh, those belts. I agree. I, I listen. Once Collision comes out and you have Dynamite on Wednesday, Collision on Saturday, that hour of Rampage. I hope it's not thrown away. That should just instantly be turned into your ROH show. ROH Rampage. Boom. Yeah. Yep. All that's on it is your champ. You know, I'm not saying just your champs, but anybody. There's your draft. There's your brand split. I mean, mm -hmm. ROH is minuscule as it is right now in AEW with the umbrella over it. So whoever your champs are and a couple others, throw them there. You guys have you have an hour. Yep. You're, you're live. Do whatever, however you want to record it. Boom. This is your shit. Go at it. Throw you're the not going to come back over for a while. Exactly. Showcase. The hell out of the ROH brand, who you have aligned to it, because they do, you can tell they have several people aligned to it that only show up on ROH, but then there's several people that are way too much on both that you're just like, well, why would I turn into Honor Club when I can already see him wrestle here? And I'm getting Ray Phoenix versus Claudio on this show. Right. So as opposed I'm to. I'm not giving you 10 extra dollars. I'm not giving you 10 extra dollars. You put this on Honor Club. I'm Maybe I'll give you ten. I might get it because I want to see what this does. And let's be honest, kind of underwhelmed in its own right. And I think it was because they kind of—I don't know if they just neutered the match for a little for just the beginning of the night or what. I just felt like I was expecting a lot more from this, and it kind of dampened the mood for me a little bit on Rampage. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Dynamite. Yeah, Dynamite. yeah. yeah. agreed. So all the pillars talk. Okay, you bring up whatever one you want. I'm going to bring up MJF because yeah. you're very Beatles oriented. So when oh he, my god, when he compared them to the Beatles, was he right? What, do you see that that way? He wasn't wrong. No, he wasn't. I I would never have pegged him as the Paul of the group, but hey, honestly, Sammy is Ringo. Sammy's Ringo, which was an, a funny surprise, and I liked it. I like that a lot. Darby, uh, I think Darby ended up being George. And then, yeah, because Jungle Boy was John. Right. 
you know, I would have never thought, A, MJF even giving a Beatles reference to begin with. Right. I wouldn't have even thought he knew what those they were. B, Paul McCartney being his fucking Beatle icon. It, it was, that I was fantastic. I did, did laugh. Kid. The other three. The other three, okay, cool. Like, you had some feel-good stories. You had some Darby built skate ramp in his backyard. Jungle Boy, cool. Wasn't really much of anything. You know, I had a ring back here by my pool at my lavish mansion that I grew up in because I was Luke Perry's son type thing. But, yeah, I the only memorable part of it was MJF saying he was – they were all the Beatles. Right. Like – Good promo, I guess. Good, yeah, his was. His, his was the for other, sure. The others were like, eh. uh, fast forwarding. FTR comes out. They want to apologize to Briscoe. Motherfucker. And then they fucking piled yard Briscoe. I I didn't like this at all because did you, did you not like it because of who was involved or just the outcome of it or how it, it got to the outcome? How it got to the outcome? Yeah, probably because. Listening, I know. I love wrestling. I love wrestling for my life. Some things are a tough pill to swallow. And getting the pile driver when you're blinded because some so anybody thrown in between his legs was getting a pile driver. Yeah. It's just yeah, I know there's times that you have to suspend belief. And there's times that Mark's like this this isn't gonna fucking happen. You wouldn't. You would just I'm like, <laughs> uh, listen. Are they losing the titles? Are we going to give Jeff Jarrett and Lethal, who have been carrying, doing Omen's work in the tag team division? They really have been doing great shit. Like it or not, they've been engulfed in a lot of stuff. So they're. I don't want to say carrying the division because, listen, you have a ton of awesome tag teams. They're engulfed in everybody. Did they get their pat on the back with the, the titles at least once? Or is this wait, – wait, 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 wait. Or is this so Briscoe can bring somebody else in and FTR and Briscoe can go back and fight again because – Briscoe is turning on them. My here's my prediction that you can take until double or nothing. Briscoe is screwing them over at some point. Yeah, okay, I'll buy at some point. I don't think it's double or nothing though. I think I think Briscoe knows too much that the shenanigans Lethal and Jared have been thrown on. You know that Papa Briscoe popped up in a promo the week before this, kind of pull him aside and say. Boy, let me tell you something. And started talking. Right. Or I'm sorry, to Mark. It's so it's definitely he knows that he's a pawn in their game. Now, there will be an opportunity, I think, that he does screw over FTR because I love the dynamic that they've become best friends over this year long rivalry. Whatever. Great. Fantastic. That's awesome. But you're going to tell me Mark's not sitting there like. I got to get me that tag title. Who else, who can he pull out to trust to get that tag title? I don't think FTR is losing it soon, but I don't think this is a, it is a very volatile friendship right now between the two guys without anybody, without anybody saying anything. Right. Yeah. So he may let them win on Sunday or whatever, double or nothing. It's the 28th. But he is definitely pulling the rug out from underneath him, maybe as soon as after the match. All right, that too. I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah. yeah. Because what, and I just said everything that I said about Team Jarrett, what would that do for them being tag team champs? That's the only thing. Like, there's a story being built between FTR and a couple other teams Yep. that would do more than, and I'm waving to everybody with my hand, by the way, and that would be derailed with even if it's a day. Yeah. A, a derailment for team Jared to get the win. Well, let's, yeah, exactly. And even go off of that, would you rather beat FTR without the titles or with the titles? With, with the titles. Right. So you were going to let them win 
get him back in your good graces and then punch him right in the face. Like, that's how you would do that. So There's, there's a lot of sticks going on in this match. Oh, there's a ton of sticks. There's a lot of games going on right now. There's only one scheme that's going to succeed, and I think it's Mark's, whatever Mark's doing right now. Or we could just be overthinking this, and Mark is just a simple country boy that don't want to screw over his friends, but he's going to be pissed for a little while just because he just got piled driven by a blind man. I mean, that's just the way it goes. So... Are you excited that Thunder Rosa walked back in the door, too? I was surprised. That one. I, I both of these were major surprises for me. Agreed. Both were major surprises. Thunders was a little more of a surprise to me because I thought she was still on the shelf with the back injury and that. I'm excited to see it. But how was is that it? locker room? How is that locker room looking? Or is it, are we just overthinking her coming back? Because let me ask you this. Is she really coming back, or is she maybe saying, I can't do this anymore, but let me lead something else? I don't know what that would be. What's the game there? Because one could be a comeback with Miro, and one could be, I can't Adios. wrestle anymore. I'm on my, I'm getting on my horse and riding away. Yeah. And the second is more of what I've heard. Yeah. And read and everything. Yeah. So... Roddy Strong, big set of nuts. Smart guy. He apparently got a law degree at some Everybody point. Everybody fucking has a band. Everybody's exactly. got a band. Everybody's got a law degree. Everybody knows how to get brown people now. But By the <laughs> way, uh, NBA playoffs next week still continue. So this is why you're getting a pay-per-view, essentially, on Dynamite next week. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. It's back this week and next week. Well, this past week and this week, essentially, pay per view matches. Like, they're giving shit away to keep their crowd. Mm -hmm. They got to get the crowd in. They got to get the viewers in. They got to get the ratings in. I, either way, there, there's no way Omega Moxley in a cage was going to be on dynamite if it was an NBA playoff time. Right. Like, there's just no way that's happening. But. Do you think Roddy stands a chance in hell of winning that match, even with everybody None. gone? Yeah. None. You? No. God, no. I thought he would make – so here's what I thought was going to happen, but I don't know if it is going to happen now. Maybe they'll find a way to make it happen. It's false count setting. I think it's false count anywhere. Adam Cole's banned from the arena, not the show. He's banned from the building. But right. Everybody's so he, banned from the building. So if this goes out in the parking lot, JAS is there. JAS is there. Adam Cole could be there. So that's where I thought that was going originally. But then when they banned JAS, I'm like, eh, that's probably definitely where this is going because what's Jericho's game plan? You get him out in the parking lot and let JAS beat yeah. him up and jump him. Yeah. I mean, that that's very predictable. One oh, yeah. that banning was, yeah, very yeah. predictable. But then essentially, maybe Adam Cole won't be there. And then just JAS yes, pummels Roddy. Swarms them and goes for him, which would be which would make more sense. Right. But yeah. And it's Jericho's MO essentially yeah. to do that. It is. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh Lucha came out with Christian. Uh the only thing I really got out of this was it's pop, not soda. The guy kept putting his sign. You know, I gotta appreciate that man. From my do. parts it is pop and my it'll too. stay pop forever. Uh, you soda drinkers, just because you think you're better than everybody, calling it soda doesn't mean anything, okay? It's always pop. But, hey, you know, being a legend, you just have to be Ric Flair's lapdog. That's all you have to do, apparently. So we got to remember that. we got to be born earlier to be Ric Flair's lapdog. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. What did you think of the no hold barred between Julia and Anna Jay? I'm sadistic, and I was expecting more out of this. I was expecting a bloodbath, to be honest. So We've seen it from both of them, though. That's why. We have seen it from both of them. Anna Jay, in particular, we've seen her just take it to the fucking limit. Uh, the one popping out of my head is the one against Penelope Ford and uh, the Bunny a couple yeah. years ago, her and Ty. That bloodbath that was just amazing in its own right, beautifully done. This one just seemed a little like, uh, okay, 
cool. It was like, not. I mean, wasn't. I I love that maybe this is, and this is Mark saying this, maybe this is a push Julia gets now. Listen, she's done yeah. a lot on Rampage and Dark Elevation, not Rampage, Dark Elevation and Elevation and all that. Um, and she's been working on her craft. Maybe we're going to see more Julia because you know how I feel about her. Yeah. And I, I just, I think she's lost in the shuffle right now. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because what else is she doing really out of this? This was the boost. This was definitely the boost for Julia. Get her to the next level because she has to be appear dangerous instead of just being that person with the House of Black. Now she's coming out of the shell since she debuted with the group a year over a year ago. Now she's finally coming out of her shell. She's finally putting herself out there as more of a domineering figure of sorts. She can wrestle, she can do this, she can do that. Anna Jay, unfortunately, has just become the stepping stone for a lot of people. And that's unfortunate to say. Cause she's she, she's seems so, she has a lot of talent. She seems so promising in that space. Maybe there will be a plan for her down the road. Because, But right now, she's just being used as that bridge to get her over the gap, over the top. But again, for both of them, it was a decent match, but at the same time, I was expecting a bloodbath. So when you don't get that, you're kind of like, well, all right, well, that was something. But we do get one, though. We do get one. But oh, yeah, of course. Maybe that's why we didn't get that one. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, but we have the House of Black against Best Friends and Bandito in an open house match with no witches allowed because that was their stipulation that they picked. That's, <laughs> that's them. Good. And I watched minimal of this. Why did I watch minimal of this, Jenks? You know right off the bat. Because there was no witches involved. Well, That's yeah. Just <laughs> That's was it the lighting? It fucking lighting pissed me off. <laughs> it fucking pissed me off. From one. I, I hate that. But see, I didn't hate this lighting because it wasn't a red filter and it distracted from the match. It was a spotlight amongst the black crowd. I didn't mind that. Now, did they need to have the stupid ass whatever they had on the Titan Tron going on? No. No, absolutely not. That, they could have that, just left it be. I've gone to indie shows and that's how they have the spotlight in the ring and I, I don't mind that. When you have to add whatever that was. Yeah. One my mind goes there because I have ADHD and every other disease that you can possibly think of and I just what the fuck's going on? Who's that's what I'm thinking. What's going on? What holy shit, what's going on in the ring? Oh my god, this is, I was lost. Lost. Uh, I was distracted by that, but I was also not I mean, I wasn't fully involved in this match either. It was just kinda like huh, okay. I mean I didn't think best friends and Bandito were gonna get anywhere either. close that to too. the title. Especially when they chose the witch to be the Exclusion rule for them. I was like, okay, but that was right on brand for them. But overall, it was just like the house rules essentially just said we have twenty second count outs. That's it. Yep. So, yeah, that was about it, and no rope breaks. So I didn't see any rope breaks. But wow, great! That's cool. Bad match. Bad match. Bad match. Uh, we should have said this when we were talking about Orange. Kyle Fletcher attacked him. Aussie Open. Yeah, Aussie Open. Is one of the, is one of the Aussie Open injured? Because Fletcher, I saw, had an ROH match this week. Now, apparently, he's going to have the international title shot probably next week on on Dynamite. I don't know why I keep switching them, but it was. It just seems like one of them might be injured, and they're just kind of Kyle Fletcher is just doing his own thing right now, just getting some spotlight on him. Not- not gonna win the international championship, folks. Not. This, but what if he does? I would be shocked. Do you think this brings? Would, back, if you want to shock me, do it. Do you think this brings back Will Osprey? Oh, definitely. This is this is definitely leading up to Will. But yeah. I I, I I I know Forbidden Door is not right around the corner, but it's it's, it's right a month away. Corner. It's a month away. Yeah. So it's literally we're almost to the corner that it's going to be around. Will's going to be on that show. Yeah, and it's probably they're going to revisit last year, Osprey Cassidy. It was for the U.S. title. This year they'll they'll just visit it for the international title, and nobody's going to be nobody's going to hate that. 
No. But the question is, does Orange get over on Osprey this year, or does Osprey get – is Osprey the guy to beat Orange? Well, does Orange have the title? Because we just gave it to Miro. Because yeah, if it's Miro, then it doesn't really fucking matter. That's fair. But, I mean, you could still throw Orange and Osprey in it, and then – then that's a different dynamic uh, for Orange for me to watch Will. Yeah. It, it, it's just that we wanted – my big thing is we all wanted Orange to have this title. Now that he's got the title, I want something else along with the title, and he's not hes not giving it to me. You I don't, don't know what I want. It's – well, I think it's more of – it's not him getting lucky to win the title. Yeah. I, th- that, I think that's the more moral of the story here. Yeah. Excuse me. If he was just beating people soundly and without quick roll-ups and all that, I think that's a whole different story. But, again, it goes back to a shtick that we could go on for five minutes about. So we get the cage match. By mm-hmm. the way, congratulations to Northwestern. They just beat Indiana. So they're yeah, that, they uh, kicked their ass there. I turned it on while we were talking. Oh, my God. Throttled them. Uh, apparently, that's why they're number one in the the Big Ten. But we get to the cage I... match of John Moxley and Kenny Omega. Listen, just talking about the match, I feel I can do no justice for what this match was. It was fucking phenomenal. It was a phenomenal. It was a spectacle in its own right. And again. I'm going to go off you. We could talk about some of the spots, but at the same time, there's no way to describe this. You need to watch it. You need to watch what happened and how it happened because that's just how you need to do it. Listen, I watched this. This was the last thing that I watched prior to the show because Mm -hmm. I had to catch up on things. So this was watched a la 2 o'clock Friday. So this is when I watched it. This is another reason why I'm excited, because this fucking match at 2 o'clock this afternoon had me going, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> Callie's at home, like, what's wrong with you? Are you having a seizure? Are you okay? <laughs> the dog, I'm literally saying that out loud. They're like, okay, uh, all right. She comes in from the kitchen. What just happened? Uh, like, this engulfed us for the, I don't know. It felt like the match was 30 seconds long, but it was also, because then I paused it and looked, it was set up to be like a 35-minute match. Yeah. Ish, ish. Yeah. It was, yes. Is it in the running? All fucking right. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's called the Crushies. <laughs> That's the thing. But, yeah, it's definitely in the running. I mean, I loved all the callbacks. They put it into the light, the light, lights out match way back when. The broken glass piece was just yes, spot on with that. But again, if you didn't go into this match expecting something absolutely crazy from these two after watching what was that lights out match way back when, I don't know what you guys were doing. I, I feel like you were under a rock because I knew this going into it. As soon as I saw Moxley Omega Cage, I'm like, oh shit, here we go. This is about to get really intense really quickly, and it didn't let up. And no. especially through the cage, oh, fuck that! Oh, who do you and think got it worse? There, you thought your nuts hurt this week, Omega. <laughs> right. After that V trigger, god damn! Not up or shut up. Uh, not up or shut up. Uh, I switched to Tennessee and Alabama. It's the top of the first. Base is fucking loaded for Bama. Um, well, that's terrible Hit news. Yeah, um, that's probably somebody I won't root for. I do like Tennessee, so I don't like Bama. Yeah, it's then okay. once the cage is open, match this, that, and the other thing. Don fucking Callis. Oh, we fuck. speculated for months since the return and everything. We didn't expect him to fucking shiv him. Jesus Christ! In this fucking match, we thought maybe it would have been like to catch the. Like, right. there was the turn there. No, he fucking steals the screwdriver from Ox and then shivs him in the fucking head after he's going for the pin on right. what was a one-winged angel on some of that glass. Oh, my God. Perfect. I don't, all right, because people are like, oh, what a perfect fucking match. All right, you know what I mean. The storytelling and this, that, and the other thing. The storytelling. Right in my fucking wheelhouse. Yeah, yep, agreed. 
it was in my wheelhouse. It also make now looking back in hindsight because you brought it up, makes sense why the other match wasn't that brutal. This was its beautiful, brutal masterpiece that it needed to be overall. And Callis doing that. Now people are questioning what's going on. Why is he doing this? What's he up to? Callis is, play, Callis is always playing a different hand than everybody else anticipates. So there's some shit going down a double or nothing. I don't know what it is. I don't either. And, and I need I'm, to know. I, I, need, I need to know, to know now. Fellow Can't crush your nation. I'm in the. I'm out of the loop so far. I'm standing at home plate and shit's going on in left field. Um, I'm not even in the stadium. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Because I don't know where we're fucking at. I'm waiting in line to get into the fucking stadium at this point. So the question then becomes, BCC Elite, what does that look like? We're probably going to get Hangman back. But what the hell happens at Double or Nothing? What bullshit game is Callus playing for Double or Nothing? Because we already know this is going to be some ass spectacle oh fuck it. Is how it is a cage match like this what is what, it going to be what is it going to be when you add the young bucks brian danielson cesaro yuda who last year did anarchy in the arena and we got one of the greatest images even though he's not going to be in this match of eddie kingston walking down like a zombie with a gas can yes what are we going to see from these guys? And then you're going to have the elite, which it's going to be Kenny Omega, who's one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. The young bucks who will put on spectacle after spectacle and just jump off shit wherever they can go. Wearing hang, spike sneakers. Wearing spike sneakers. We could get the thumbtack sneakers back. And then you got Paige who's going to come back and he's going to be his cowboy self, maybe run over somebody with a horse at some point because he's done that before. All of that circling around, Takeshita's looming somewhere. So is Takeshita turning, quasi turning on the elite, or is he a part of the elite, or what does this look like here? There's so many questions, so many variables, so many amazing things that could happen. Double or nothing might it host, it's on a fucking Sunday night, and it's on, most people are like, "Oh, Memorial Day is the next day." Not, not a holiday hard. for a garbage man. Not for Mark. It is for me, and I'm going to be sitting with my feet up watching. All of this go down, and I know you'll watch it too. Oh, right, fine. going to work. You if you to. think I'm going to be in any shape or form, by the way, I get paid double time on Memorial Day, so it Very will nice. be a long Memorial Day. <laughs> of picking up garbage because Mark's going to be dragging ass. They're like, "Come the fuck on, we want to go home." I said, Listen, I was up until midnight thirty watching Double or Nothing. I had shit to do. I had shit yeah. to do. I had to watch drive all day. Let me drive die. all day. <laughs> Um, yeah, so AEW is right where it fucking needs to be. Listen, everything is in my book. Everything is just oiled up, greased. Everything's running. I'm ready for anything they throw at me. So I'm interested to see how long this lasts. We were in a low, we were in a lull. It was obvious that they made this happen with the NBA playoffs playing competition to them now. So now we have to see how long this kind of thing goes because they're throwing everything at the wall to get viewers. Right. Let's give it a month after Forbidden Door where the mindset, does the quality stay up or do we revert back to where we were before? Because now I'm going to be cautiously optimistic with this product. Well, with the essential – Next show coming on. Yep. And lingering talks about WB giving them stuff. Look into mm. that as you may. I, I, I don't want to jinx or not that anybody gives to Fox and say, but jinx any of that. What's going on? But WB is doing something. If it, money is going to be, I think that only, you know, boom, 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 more stuff is happening. Yep. More viewers, I yeah, I don't see, I'll eat crow probably, but I, I don't see where it drops for a while, especially with the fucking pay-per-views you have coming up. I think like, it, this is AEW's hottest time. This is AEW's hottest time. You're right. I think at least, that's why I said through the Forbidden Door, they're golden. 
Because that's I'm gonna, gonna say threw all out. I would love to believe that. But I don't know. I don't know if we get the wall in July because they don't have any competition to kind of drive them to put out a better product at that point. Plus, for so AEW... You're, you're saying the MLB All-Star game is in competition? Uh, you know... Jeez. Well, first of all, it's on a Tuesday night. Dynamite's on Wednesdays. So... Yeah. <laughs> I, know I know what you meant. But what I would say is this, is... Let's, I want to watch and see, does it fall into a lull in that time off? Because remember, AEW, it does some storytelling, but usually it doesn't kick off its full storytelling until about two weeks out when they have to fill the pay-per-view card with matches. So that's when they start just getting all this like storyline stuff to st- start thrown to the wind. Okay. Does that happen again for All Out? Does it happen again for All In, which is a week after All Out? How are they balancing this whole kit and caboodle. I think that's going to be another interesting aspect of it is you have two major shows back to back. back. And How do you balance that? How do you make that work? Because that's very so make dangerous. A WrestleMania and WrestleMania backlash. And I'm not saying this backlash, by the way, but don't ask backlashes. Don't make it SummerSlam and whatever that hell that one-off was that so Roman could win the title a week later, whatever that was after when Roman came back. Don't make it that either. Make it Make it something I hopefully it's just something good enough that they know what they're doing. They're just building up enough storylines to have two cards. Have a pay per view the week before and then they have something a pay per view for all all in. We know the world title picture will be fine. They'll find a way to make that fine. We know there'll be something with the factions, but how do you build that out going forward? The women are gonna be no matter what happens, I and I'm gonna say this between if it's Soraya and Jamie and it trickles to the next week, Soraya Britt, Jamie Britt. I, I'm not saying they're breaking up or anything, but it, however we throw this in, there's months in between that maybe somebody else trickles over as we keep knocking on this forbidden door that her last match, I think, is next week, right? It is last, I think it is next week. So... If she doesn't walk through the forbidden door, I actually would be stunned. Yeah. Because it's I fine. think go ahead. No, the go other ahead. I was gonna say we forgot about one return. That happened last week. That ran out in shoes that had fucking oh, she, yeah. how does how does she do that? How does she to do that? I have, like I, I the fuck man, I would have fell over on those goddamn things. But anyways, she'd have returned Turned that whole thing upside down. Well, made it look like she was aligning. Now she's on hesitantly with Britt and Jamie, which is good. That's fantastic. She is back. But then one week later, she's already back in Japan. Right. So it was a one-off. So, like, is she only showing up for certain things? How does that work? Is that Mercedes' opponent for Forbidden Door? Who knows? I don't know. But there's enough either. stories that everybody's like, okay, it's going. There's absolutely enough stories. It's finally kicked off. It has. It has. All right. Let's collect ourselves. Come back. We'll give you just a WWE segment. We'll go over Backlash and the other two shows, SmackDown and Raw. Essentially filler with a little bit. A little bit of tournament. A little, little tournament. bit of tournament. A little tournament. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Hey, this is the Barbie Killer, Haley Shadows. I absolutely hate can crushers, but I'm going to be on it, so stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast is back with the two can crushers, Mark the Mark and Sir Michael Jenks. Should I start the show off like that tomorrow or today as you're listening to this, by the way? I think you should. Uh, you inspired me because you said, ladies and gentlemen, to open the show. So I'm like, well, I got to bring back the road dog. To kind of compliment it in segment three, so I like it. So do it. I wonder if it, 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 if there's any uh, legality in that. Well, you have to find. You know, do it yeah. and then ask for forgiveness later. I mean, I mean, I can't believe it's trademarked anywhere. Would it be? I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, when you do it, it it's I don't think you'll be fine. Right. I, it might be bad for us. That's why I did a parody of it. So, yeah, All right. wrestling, wrestling podcast parody. Touche. 
SmackDown the night before was in Puerto Rico before backlash. Filler. Not being a dick. <laughs> but I mean what else could you do right. before the big pay per view? Because I think I think they had a great crowd. Oh, it was a hot God. crowd for both nights. But to that point, SmackDown was only going to be ah, uh, it's here. All right. We're here. We're here for two nights. Here we are for this one night, but it was never going to be anything spectacular or special. No. So let's dive right into this. We had a bet that the title was not on the line. We're just, we're here. So the mat, we're going to break this down match by match. Uh, Bianca and EO starts for the Raw title. What a divided crowd. First yeah. and foremost, of what I, I'm like, holy crap. I didn't think it was going to be that divided. I didn't think so either because I thought damage control might have a little more heat to it. EO wasn't going to get that love. But that crowd knows their women's knows their wrestlers, and they loved the shit out of EO more than I thought, which was fantastic for that because I, I thought that helped bring a little bit of a balance and something Bianca hasn't had to really deal with. Right. And her title reign so far. So, right. uh, yeah. Love the Spanish 10 count, by the way. Love the Spanish count <laughs> all night. But, I don't know why I popped every fucking time, but I did. Every it, count. It was so much more noticeable. I, I think it's because you become, if it happens in America, you become deaf to it, right? Right. Just, it's an everyday background sound. Because it's Spanish, it's a lively crowd, it's heated. And honestly, first time we've heard counting in a while for it. It was fucking great. I loved it. it was... Into the match, I said, fuck. That he almost died in the match. I know we usually don't call on a lot of stuff. We let things slide. Yeah. But holy shamoli. I And I I know how the power slam is done. Yeah. It, it's You're both working. I don't know who essentially lost it. But goddamn. Thank God she recovered. Because she, had that was bad. An, she had an angel with her at that point because that was it was nasty. Yeah. It, it it was not good. Ugh. I love the shit out of this match though. Like I said, this is gonna be hard pressed to beat. Right off the bat, this is gonna be hard pressed to beat. Because I thought, Oh shit. This is a perfect place for EO to win this. Then, yeah. then, because you you have a split crowd, you pull that trigger, and okay, you're not going to get the booze from Tennessee or you know right. wherever Bianca. Because listen, America to Puerto Rico, completely different crowd as we said. And that's why <laughs> I wanted to pinpoint that right off the bat. This would have been the perfect place for that to happen. Did it? No, but. It extended the storyline. It extended a storyline. And Bianca's not involved. I think it accelerated the end of a storyline. A end of a faction, we'll say. And honestly, I think it extended it to last night for you guys when you're listening to this last night. I think this is happening on Friday Night SmackDown because this is the way... I was with you. I was starting to think EO had this and was going to win this thing, right? But then when Damage Control came down, I'm like, oh, there's going to be some fuss, Keystone Cops kind of clusterfuck going on here. And it was a clusterfuck. The way Bailey caught ended up costing EO Which pretty much everything, stupid way. it was a stupid way to do it, but it now gives the reason for them to kind of just say, no, fuck Bailey. We're going to turn on her and we're going to do our own fucking thing. It accelerated that tremendously, and I didn't think it was coming that fast. But now, either. but now it seems like it's right here, and it's knocking on the doorstep. And for those, that when you're listening to this, they've already kicked the door down, and it could have happened. Yeah, I didn't know that Becky was the longest reigning champion. I was r- ripping this back to Nikki Bella every time that they're oh she's the longest reigning champion. Blah, 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 blah. I didn't know Becky surpassed that. Or I thought, at one point, I thought Charlotte did because I thought Charlotte had an extended title reign when when she first won the title. 
Right. Charlotte had that extended reign. I didn't realize it was Becky, but I guess Becky technically did have it. But Nikki, Nikki didn't have it for a year. Now that we're saying this, Becky almost did. I thought Nikki's was like 477 days or something like that. I don't think she ever eclipsed the year. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. So Bella beat it anyway, even from WrestleMania to WrestleMania, essentially. And then, yeah. But but Becky's, uh, I, I forgot Becky had a lengthy title reign. I knew Becky had a lengthy title reign. I just did not think she was the longest reigning champion, to your point. I did not realize that. But all in all, I, I like this. I Like I said, man, this was going to be hard-pressed to beat. Next matchup was Seth and Omos. Um, didn't do it for me. It was better than I thought it would be. And longer than I thought it would be. Cause I thought Definitely this would longer be a, than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be a shorter match. I know people, I heard the rum, I saw the rumblings that people were praising Omos for this match. No, you put him in the ring with Seth Rollins. Seth is going to make some sort of lemonade out of chicken shit. Yeah. He's going to make it into some sort of, at least a three star match of some sort, right? This was not the greatest match in either man's career. Well, it was probably the greatest match in Omos's career, but it, it was better than I thought it had any right to be. And I was kind of surprised Seth won it. I did like, they did the classic big man, big man moves, blocking the stomp, you know, the choke slam, or whatever. The top rope was actually pretty cool. That stomp from the top rope was very fucking cool. So, I liked how creative we got with it to get to the ending point instead of it just being like a cheap victory roll-up type thing with it. By the way, we both had Bianca winning, so we're good there. Yeah. Yeah. We both well, you already you already said I lost, so we're going to I know. But I'm at least telling the people where you lost. Oh, uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> we both had Seth winning, so we're good there. My question to you is Almost lost WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar to Mahimus. What's the word I'm looking for? Behemoth. Behemoth. What? Yeah. Where? Monster. I think you tried to put monsters and behemoth together and get yeah. Mahimus. I like Mahimus. We'll, we'll make this a thing. Behemoth. Two Mahimus. Yeah. Two big men. So that's legit. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. understand that. No disrespect to Seth. This is not disrespect to Seth. Almost now lost to a man half his size. Where again, I will ask this, and please, you don't have to answer it all because it's yeah, a okay. redundant question. Where does this fucker go now? What do we do with him? Well, I think that's the beauty of this free agency. He can just disappear for a little bit. They can work on some more. But I would also say, I don't think it you keep it off of Saudi though. Uh, they might. They might have enough going on at Saudi. They don't need Omos there. I do. I want to say this though. He didn't take. He didn't lose anything. He didn't have much to begin with, but he didn't lose anything <laughs> because he lost to Seth freaking Rollins, who is a main event player in your company. Legit. So, legitimately. Yes. Yeah. So if he didn't figure out how to beat Omos. I think that would have been a bigger shock and a bigger suspension of belief than Omos being Seth. You know what I mean? Right. Just right. or Seth being Omos, but yeah. Right. Um, my disappointing match of the night is this triple threat match that we're going to talk about. Mm. I don't. It, I don't know. I I literally wrote nothing super special in this match. Theory retains. It was run of the mill. They did their. It was a raw main event. At the end. Yeah, it was a raw. It wasn't even a main event of a raw. Okay. I yeah. even. I mean, I get it for the U.S. title sake, but it, it just didn't seem like. I kind of drifted out on it a little bit, like just kind of spaced out. I was like, okay, big guys. I knew Bronson was gonna was not gonna win this. Right. We wanted it. We we could have petition petitioned for him to win it. We knew he wasn't gonna win it. So it came down to Bob and Theory, and at the same time, you're sitting there thinking, nah, why would Theory lose the title here? So it's kind of like process of elimination. 
how do you get to Theory winning the title? And they did the tired trope of, oh, quick steal, throw Bobby out of the ring, see you bye. I think this hurt Reed. I think it did, too, because he was literally just in the match to take a pinfall. Yep. As much as we were give him the title, he's that. He's that. And it could be, yes, coming down the line, that's the way. Listen, that's WWE's mantra. You bury him for a little bit, and then all of a sudden they get the title. And you're like, holy shit, that surprised me. Sometimes even surprise hurts. No, it hurts big time. Because it... It may not hurt in the way they think it does, but it damages your credibility of what your championship was or is, and it hurts the title itself. And to that aspect, it can hurt the champion. Yeah. So. Perfectly put. Way to look at it. So, yeah, that the most underwhelming match. By the way, you had Bob, I had Austin. That's where that's one that you missed. I was too only missed two. I was too two. I was I'm now I'm on a losing streak to you where I've dropped all of the ones that we've been separated by. Right. I was this four, and it's going to be five now after this, whatever one gets revealed to me here, because I can't remember. But eh, you know, now looking back, that Bob one was pretty stupid of a guess. But maybe yeah. I had some high hopes. You had high hopes. Listen. I have a lot to say on this next match. Ripley against Vega. Unbelievable emotion in this. Couldn't Vega get a surprise victory? Switch it the following fucking night? What would Puerto Rico do if Vega would have got it? It's David versus Goliath. I understand Ripley has everything in the world, but what if she demands her rematch the next fucking night, two nights later, whatever, and decimates Vega then back here in the United States? Doesn't she look like a bigger monster then? I I was so invested in Vega in this match because of the emotion. Because did I pick her? Nope, I didn't pick her. So my heart wasn't that stupid to go. But it was everything... That this is something I think Puerto Rico, and they have something to talk about down the line, in a cheesy way, but this would have meant more, I think, than the main event, one of the main events, if Vega would have won. Agreed, because it's a major title to do it. But we know WWE. They you don't can't care. win. You can't win in your home country. You can't win in your home town. You can't do any of that. If you do, it's by hook or by crook, or somebody just did not have a thought process that day that we should be in a WWE mindset. They weren't going to give that crowd that feel good moment because they had that. They had one planned in what turned into be the spectacle that was later on in the night for the street fight. So. Zelina, it was a feel-good moment for Zelina. We were all pulling for her, but at the end of the night, it was just like, you knew it wasn't going to happen. Right. It I just, just wanted it. And it, it twisted right then and there because I'm like, Vegas, I didn't think it was going to be as long as of a match as it was. Yeah, and, and to your point, if there was ever a time in a championship match to have a surprise package roll-up type victory, this one. Not yeah. Orange Cassidy doing it, but this one, because it's a huge home country pop it puts a it puts a special moment involved in the pay-per-view itself which to that point there it, the pay-per-view itself didn't have a lot of special moments no to walk away from i mean the street fight had some people come out we'll get to that when we get there but it didn't have that truly defining special moment that i think needed it needed this pay-per-view is forgettable and if we were looking at it like that this pay per view is forgettable, probably by next week, and I hate to say it like that. You, I will always remember Vega coming out with that flag and getting teary eyed and everything like that. That had nothing to do with the wrestling. No, I'll remember that, and I'll remember how hot the crowd was, and how much I would just want them to go back to Puerto Rico on a loop on backlash. 
Exactly. Every year. And the, I'm glad you brought that up because the wrestlers are actually petitioning to do that. that yeah. They could go there. Yeah, I did see that. I saw that was rumbling. I think that's a smart idea. Every year, I mean, they haven't had it for 18 years. It had been since they had a premium live event. And the reason why they didn't have it for 18 years, I think, played a lot into the injuries that were suffered that that night. You've, it's a bad omen type thing. You know how baseball, you have those superstitions. You're like, oh, my God, that really bad happened. We should not do that again. I think that's what played into them never going back for 18 years. And now that they have and it went successfully, let's create those special moments. Let's go back year over year. You can have a standing pay-per-view in a standing place and go back year after year after year a- after a- year. AEW in Vegas. AEW in Vegas. AEW a- in Chicago. WWE put one in Puerto Rico. I'll still say it. Leave money in a bank in London. Very old London every year. You're golden. Yeah. You you go to Saudi twice a year anymore. Yeah, exactly. You have standing ones in Saudi twice a year. Throw something in London. Just do it. Why not? I mean. I agreed. Yeah. Mania needs to go there one year. Oh, I completely much, agree. As Mania. Much as I, you know, whatever, but Mania needs to go there. All right. We made reference to this a couple of times. It's a street fight. I, I'm shocked that they actually put these back to back. I do. It, it is because of Vega getting her moment sliding right into Bad Bunny in Priest. Glad to see Bad Bunny as a fan of Taylor Swift wearing a 13 shirt. You know, by the way. He, he wasn't going to shake it off. That's for sure. There's bad blood between these guys. There's, bad, there's a ton of bad blood between Karma. these guys. Uh, they would have fought till midnight if they could have. So They're never, ever getting back together. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was exactly what the fuck you thought it was going to be. Yeah, uh, gang warfare. It was I gang warfare. Expect right? to see fucking Savio Vega though. <laughs> no, but but uh, Savio Vega, first of all, acting like a mob boss, handing out candle sticks from the back for the proud of Puerto Rico. Then Carlito coming out. I, I wasn't expecting to see Carlito at all, so nope. I was excited about that one. But then Savio Vega throwing the Quang uh, martial art kicks in there, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? So <laughs> It did what it needed to do. This, this was, did. if there's a feel-good moment that Puerto Rico is going to pull, it's a bad buddy beat Damian Priest, and Jesus God. But you know what? I props to Bad Bunny taking not only a beating in this match, but the spot off the damn speakers onto the tables. And almost him. killing himself with the sliced bread from the with top. With the sliced bread from the top, bouncing his head off the mat. Oh my god! I props to Bad Bunny. He he fought like he fought pretty good. And again, another it was a solid match from him. It was a spectacle affair. Um, yeah, yeah. this isn't going to be match of the year. No, Could it's it in, this, in a it's spectacle, spectacle moment. Yes, of course. Honestly, I'm just going to be honest. I can't get over Quang and Savio Vega. The, oh. That fucking thing just... I popped more for Vega than this match. In this <laughs> but as soon as you I thought... For... Was this the Vega you thought you were going to pop for tonight? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I was shocked. Listen, as soon as I saw the 13 on his chest, I'm like, why the fuck is he wearing Taylor Swift's lucky number? And I don't know why that came in, but you just know Taylor Swift's favorite number is 13, so... Is that his? He claimed it I, to the to the Bad Bunny people out there that are fans. However many of them there are, apparently he, he's the biggest fucking recording artist. He is he's in the, the world. World, yeah, he's the most streamed. Is twenty three his album cover or thirteen his album cover? Because when I think about it, was it Rumble or when he did the song with Booker? It was Rumble because he did the song with Booker T. He came out with a bulletproof vest that said twenty twenty three. And then he had a shirt that says 13. So are these like album numbers or are they just like, I, I don't know, I, humble brags, what it, what it is, I guess. I don't I, know. Dell names or, uh, her albums after her dog or something. I don't fucking know what they name albums anymore. Oh, yeah, she does, doesn't she? I don't, I don't know. know. It was a number. It was a number. It was like Adele 1, Adele 2, yeah. something like that. It was similar to Zeppelin, who did Zeppelin 1, Zeppelin 2, yada, yada, yada. So... Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, 
This is the other one that you lost, the bloodline in KO and Sammy and Riddle. Um, I'm okay with this loss because I thought it could go either way, but and it did. So, and there was a little bit of this, a little bit of that during the whole match. I it fed to the story, but it didn't feed enough to the story for me because I was kind of getting questionable. I'm like. It, just fucking hit him. Just you're pissed off at him. Just fucking hit him. This would be a perfect place. Like him. Fucking Roman's not there to bail anybody out. Fucking hit him. Drop yeah. him and then explain it Friday night. Right. Yeah. I I would agree because I I felt like he I, especially when you hold too long on the spike at the right. end when you're sitting there and it was like you made eye contact. You know who it is, but you sit there for an additional thirty seconds contemplating doing it mm. 30 mm. seconds is a long, long time time yes long time in tv tv land so if you're going to take that shot then take the shot don't prolong it but outside of that it, it seems like this was a raw main event yep. for the most part this was this was to cr- to quiet down the crowd yeah it really was I will ask you this, because I posted this, I believe, Friday. Is Riddle released? If Riddle's not released for the lewd video that's out there of him, yeah, you better be fucking hiring Mandy Rose back real back. quick, huh? Yeah, very, very quickly. I don't know how you can say one's okay and one's not okay. Like, that, if you're going to have zero tolerance, it applies to everybody. Well, it doesn't. And I'm glad you brought that up, too, because apparently Brock Lesnar also doesn't have drug tests. Well, Not referring yeah. that he does them or anything like that, but it's been brought, that's been brought out this week as well, that Brock Lesnar isn't in the same drug testing atmosphere as the rest of everybody. Well, we also know what that kind of program is actually doing, which that, that's no. a whole other conversation. Oh, no, good, yeah. There's a whole different conversation going on there. So I think we go with recent events. I mean, Brock's a spectacle. They're not going to tell Brock, no. You can't do whatever you're doing. You can't do whatever you're doing. Riddle is a different – he has been an issue. He has been a problem. The cocaine things last year, everything with that, to before he had a lot of backstage – problems with people rubbing people the wrong way making comments you know actions at some point there's got to be a line drawn mandy rose did not have a lot did not have most of these issues she just had naked issues and naked naked issues explicit content issues that you took offense with so if you're going to take offense with one then you got to take offense with the other one especially when there's a laundry list building take the action and just walk away. Yeah. Like it's as simple as that, but they won't riddle fans. We're sorry, but listen, never. in the, I, I can't imagine he's ever going, even without this laundry list of stuff that we just ripped off. He's not in the heavyweight picture ever. U S intercontinental, whatever, not even this farce title that we'll talk mm-hmm. about quickly here. He's not in that – like, he's not a face for your company. And I understand, yeah. you know, uh, you know, Bianca, face, Ripley, face. You know, they're all their brand's face. Roman, the complete face. Whatever – when Seth wins this next one, face. You know, boom. Matt Riddle is probably thought about WWE after Ludwig Borga for me. Bring yeah. that fucking name up. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to bring that name up, I think, once a month. Because I feel like you keep bringing Ludwig up at least once a month. I know. That's just what I love it. Up. I love it. You know that. I know. I could have said Skinner because I saw him this past weekend. But, like, he he's just – i I've never been a fan. I would not care if he's released as we're recording. And I don't care if he pops up anywhere. I just – to me, he just seems dirty. Yes. And dirty I'll product. That before I just really go off and fucking get sued for something. 
Bowl of, yeah. It's a bad scenario. It's you do things. What's your personal preferences? Those are your personal preferences, but there are consequences to your actions. So if it does happen, I'm not surprised. Agreed. Moving along. <laughs> Moving along. Cody Brock, your main event. Uh, Cody attacks before the bell. I like this. I do. I, I love where they were going with this. Um, suplexes, 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 suplexes. This match was cut short is what I'm reading because yes, there was maybe going to be blood, <laughs> but not, not a fucking bag of <laughs> O2 or whatever. Did he really take that the hard way? Did he legit just fucking bounce his head off that corner I on he, purpose, non-purpose? I, I, he obviously did because the way he split open like a cantaloupe, or watermelon was unfucking believable, and Jesus. it was like nothing happened to him though. So props no. to, besides, he got it. yeah, but he just played power through it. Like he reacted blood, and he's in fight mode at that point, which he's done that before. He he's done that several times when he's bled. I remember Roman and him WrestleMania 31. He bled on accident. He had the cut. He just went fucking on like the. Nothing was happening. But this time, it looked like he was in a murder scene. He was redder than he usually looks with his skin. He was just bleeding like nothing. It didn't look like it hit hard. But again, it's always those blunt objects that catch you in just the right way that will bust you open profusely. Yeah. I... I we both had Cody, by the way. We, we yeah. thought hooker by crook or whatever, a roll-up victory. Um... But yeah, uh, but by the way, Brock looks scarier with stitches in a black eye. Well, as we fast forward to Raw, we, we gotta fast forward. He looked real scary with that. Yeah. yeah, because we get we get the essentially Raw was hey we have and I didn't know where they were doing the whole fucking tournament on Raw. I thought we were gonna get the the triple I, threat, triple threat. That's what I thought, and the next week was gonna be the the semifinal. Right? Why would we do all three at in one night? I didn't. I I have a bitch uh, as well. But so Seth wins his match, Cody's ripped out of it. Um Finn, so we get that call back that we essentially have been calling for. We thought, all right, it's gonna be a cool build up. Nope, we we get it net we get it main event. At that point, watching it, fast forwarding through it, mm-hmm. at that point I knew Finn had no chance. Not a chance at hell for me thinking maybe it's going to be Finn. Maybe it's going to be, you're going to put it on the same night. You yeah. have Seth so hot right now. The crowd is. I just want to say a sexual word. I don't want to uh, just going crazy, going nuts <laughs> for him. You can't pull that off. No, you can't. Boom. Now Seth's waiting for this is my bitch. Somebody from SmackDown to come and challenge him? I thought this was a raw title. Why Why do we have anybody on SmackDown? I thought the same thing. I was like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Why would we do this? It should be all raw, raw guys. Because think of who was left out. You know, Drew, KO, Sammy. Way Bruno, out right now. Well, well, yeah, Drew was way out there. But that's still a big name, right? I didn't understand why SmackDown guys are involved. There should be nobody from SmackDown that's going to be – and to be honest, of the SmackDown guys involved – Do you have it? Are you going to pull it up or whatever? Uh, well, I just watched one of the matches that played on the background. So you have AJ, Edge, Ray. Let's say any one of those three comes out of it. Let's say AJ comes out of there. They just drafted the OC to SmackDown. Right. AJ's not – AJ goes to Saudi. It's Seth's title. If Ray goes to Saudi – it's a it's it's Seth's title because of everything with Judgment Day. If I'm looking at Edge going, maybe they make the switch, but he literally just got smacked, drafted back. back. Why would they send him right back to fucking Raw? And I can't remember who's in the other triple threat, so I don't have that up right now. But like it, it kind of just is like we're just doing triple threats on SmackDown to 
suspend belief a little bit, but we know it's assessed to win. I think it, it seems like actually, you know what it seems like? It seems like there could have been a shift in what was supposed to happen because of an overriding figure. Oh, and an overriding figure. Oh, if you don't know, then I don't know what to tell you. It's it's about seventy seven. Right. Has a mustache, you know. And that was the same thing. I heard those rumblings as well. The draft we heard was going to be game changing. Things are going to be so crazy. And it turned out to be a normal draft. It turned out to be nothing special because there's somebody pulling strings and saying, no, that's not happening. We're going to stop you from doing that. Those are rumors. Don't know if that we can't, we can't, can't confirm them, can't deny them, but they're rumors out there. And it feels like this tournament is another, another thing of that. Another extension of those rumors. So we're getting, by the way, it's Saudi again, Cody Brock too. Um, did you see the kid yelling, kill him, kill him? Oh, yeah. Kill yeah. Cody. <laughs> Fuck it. Settle down. So whatever that's going to be, okay, we can build to that for for a little bit of time. I, I If Seth doesn't walk out with this and it ends up on SmackDown – if you don't put it on Roman in a hot minute from whoever wins it, because it's over on SmackDown, listen, this title just fucking sucks, is yeah. what I'm coming down to. Now it is even less of a consolation prize. I, I think it, it just it hindered it because you put more SmackDown people in it, and there is a belief that it's going to go to Roman. Yes. Yeah. Minimal time. It, Roman could destroy the main event tonight, or when you guys are listening this Friday night. By the way, the other three: Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, and Sheamus. You're going to tell me any of those three are going to win that title? I no, but but you know what? Why I'm going to say the person that I have winning it is going to be Bob then. Exactly. That match. Yeah. Well, here and it's on now. And again, I have not watched Jenks. Who? Listen, they already know. Tell they me. already know. AJ's okay. already won in advance. So AJ, he beats. We're gonna get Bob, Sheamus, and Theory now. So I'll we'll see who that is in twenty minutes here. Whoever that ends up being. I honestly, I'm gonna say this, and this is without watching it because we're recording it before it's done. I think Roman's interrupting this tournament is interrupting the main event and throwing himself into the tournament match. And it's Seth versus Roman at Saudi. How much... Let me spin this then. Yeah. Seth's going to beat Roman for this... (laughs) Title. L title, essentially. And then his titles don't do anything. Or... Roman throws himself in and now he's dripping in fucking gold with three titles. Titles. And then if USA is behind this to have their own title or whatever, you just fucked them off. Yeah, you just fucking said, oh, fuck you guys. It's going to Fox. It's going to Fox. Everything's on Fox now. Well, they know what they're doing. Not anymore. I think they've had to pivot a lot. But I will say this. It's a hell of a lot more intriguing tournament if you throw Roman in there going after the title. I agree. Because we're all confused why SmackDown was involved in the first place, but now we have Roman. Roman makes it at least believable SmackDown guy could win that title. And hooker by crook, Seth beats Roman, that's a big deal. And it puts credibility, I think, instantly on the title itself, which might actually help save it from the... From the mediocrity it's in right now. If Roman wins it, the title means absolute dog shit. He could wipe his ass with it and just send it back. Because Roman has nobody. Nothing is built up for Roman for Saudi. No, nothing. And their whole focus of tonight is Roman might address the bloodline and then the world title tournament. And really, they didn't put forth a strong... Grouping 
I think outside of AJ Edge and Gray, the other match, the other three, the, yeah. the other three is like okay, that's a U.S. title match, if that, because they haven't built Sheamus back up yet. Sheamus is not at the world title level that he once was last year, right? And now you know they got to build him back up. So where are we at? And Roman just beating the shit out of Shane. We'll call, I'm going to say Theory and AJ. Roman just beating the shit out of them. Actually, you know what? It's probably going to be uh, Sheamus. Because who's, who can Roman take down easier? Probably Sheamus and AJ out of those three. Out yeah. of those six. Well, four, AJ already won. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't... Fun times. I, I like your idea of Roman. I didn't actually think of Roman throwing himself in just because he's that. One more thing. Yeah. Yes. I am blatantly stealing this from Busted Open. So, sorry, Dave, Bully, and Tommy. But I'm fucking stealing it because I want to hear your thoughts. Roman can't be the undisputed champion then. Once this title, okay, say Roman doesn't get thrown into the mix and it ends up being Seth against AJ, Seth wins this. Seth is a world champion now. Remember in boxing when everything, the WNBA, the MLB, Mm -hmm. the NFL, all had their fucking boxing champions. Mike Tyson had to put those all together to become the undisputed undisputed champion. You now have a world champion over on Raw, but you have the undisputed universal heavyweight champion, WWE champion, whatever Roman Reigns has on SmackDown. He can't be undisputed. You have to take that undisputed out because – he didn't beat Seth. Yeah. That's accurate. It's it's totally fact. He is now, he would, as soon as this tournament ends, he's only the WWE Universal Champion. And that doesn't sound as appealing as the undisputed. Not on, not for a thousand, fifteen hundred days. days. Exactly. It sounds like he was just holding another title. Yeah. So. With your thoughts in that, and Roman not having anybody against Saudi, because I, I'm not taking this whole, uh, what's the MMA fighter that's calling out Roman every once in a while? Connor. Yeah. Is it Connor? Yeah, Connor. Yeah. I, I, that doesn't get pulled off in Saudi, I don't think. No, nah, that's not going to get pulled off. I don't think that's going to pulled off for a while. Right. Okay. So now what? Yeah. Where, where, because do we have the Usos? Are, are we going to get Jay against Roman and Saudi? Oof. Are we going to get the Usos versus Solo and, Re- and Roman? Maybe. But that would require a turn, I would think. Wouldn't yeah. It? And, and then again, just to go back to this, there's another champ. So the Undisputed is gone. Well, I think at some point they have to convert the WWE Universal title into just the WWE Championship. Because let's say this, Roman gets beat, but he's only beat for one title. Now you have three world champions and two brands? Math ain't mathin'. This is Steiner math territory now. How are you making this work? Or are we getting rid of... This is where my thought came. Are we really getting rid of two titles and there will only be one world champion? As Roman does qualify all of them. Because, listen, there's been time for freshen up. We need to freshen up these titles. This new one, if that's what you're going to use, is that the only one Roman's going to carry around then? And the other two kind of get retired for however fucking long that happens, maybe a year or whatever, but... I think that I like that thought, but when you have the namesake title on Roman, it's hard to put that title to pasture, right? And I guess you could say it could be the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at that point. They did that before in the past. It's something about that title needs to be separated from just the world. When you have two titles like that, Right. The WWE title, the namesake title, needs to have that separation, I think, because they've established that precedent within the company. 
I think it can be an opportunity to retire the Universal Championship. Absolutely, which needs to happen and should have happened. But I think they keep the WWE title and just say, Roman, you're the WWE champion. Seth, you're the world champion. That puts a delineation. It also puts what you mentioned earlier. Roman is the star of the company. It puts the namesake title on the star of the company for marketing purposes and for your ratings drive. And then you can continue your story what's as far till the eye can see till the end of time. That's the same path I was going down. Like yeah. I thought one title at some point is going away. One you know, has to. Wins it, he's not wearing three. He's yep. not wearing three. Yeah. I think the, I think the universal title is the Sacramento sacrifice here. It will be gone. Maybe it's, it's gone as soon as tonight, but I feel like he's going to address a lot of things from Saudi or, or not from Saudi, but from Puerto Rico plus attack and get into the tournament. Somehow, I, I just have that feeling Roman's going to bombard gonna this tournament. Now, by the way, by the way, Tennessee is now taking the lead. It's five of the four. It's actually a fucking great game. What uh, what inning? Uh, they're coming back from commercial breaks. So one whole of them. Horses. One of them. Yeah, one of, one of the seven. <laughs> lot, oh. a lot to unpack. I hope you guys are laughing at us because of what happened. Last night on SmackDown, as we're getting, I'm going to switch over. I, I have to switch over and find out because the intriguing thought of Roman doing whatever Roman's going to do. Who who else? Listen, the the Sheik wants Roman against the Ultimate Warrior. That's not going to happen. But no. you have to give him something. Yeah, you can't get the ghost of Randy Savage versus Roman Reigns. It's just not a not an option here. So. What do you, what's your next best thing? Roman, just chop Roman out, put him in a world title match. Here's your new champion. Here's your, here's your new champion for the 15th time. At oh, this are point, we if, ever if, the if, biggest Royal Rumble guy ever to defend that title? Was it Braun? If Braun won that. Did he win? Yeah, but didn't he get some title or something? Yeah, he got the greatest Royal Rumble title. I, it, it, we barely... So it's he's been lost. the longest reigning champion right now in WWE. He technically is, although he what it's talked about was before, released. he was released, so he had to vacate it. So technically, vacate is the champion right now. Although, if you go with what is the actual champion from that event, it's got to be Titus World Slide at this point, because that's the only thing people remember from that event. In that, it's five of the four, top of the fourth, by the way. Okay. Um, that... It's a it's a meme that still I know that the guy's alive and he didn't get hurt. It still is heart wrenching to watch because an inch away and he is dead. He is, yeah. He gets cocked by that side of that ring and it's a horrific scene. Yeah, he got lucky, and we can laugh about it, and we can joke about it, and all this good stuff, but. Jesus Christ, he was so close to just losing it all in that one. But and maybe not even, not even death, but a physical dismemberment, a physical injury that could have changed the trajectory of his life. So he, he was very lucky that night. All right, these cockles need some salt water, some lemon water to get ready. For- got to gargle, got to gargle it up, got to get it going. So I, I can't be singing Living Under Prayer on the way or anything belting music out. That would be how I would get ready for it. You gotta Just screaming so I sound like I <laughs> loosen up them cockles. You gotta you gotta expand them. You gotta you gotta take them to the limit. So it sounds like I smoked a pack of Marlboros right before the match. Your next match is scheduled for one fall. It's when you have that gravelly voice that really provides the gravity of what the situation is. Especially for those world title matches and that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> if you haven't heard, I'm going to High Ground Pro Wrestling again. What? Today. Yeah. Uh, buy, get get your ass to Mayfield, Falcon's Nest. Buy some tickets. See me. Uh, I I'll, sign, I'll sign your forehead or something. I, because I know <laughs> if, if you've seen the posters, they put me right in the middle of the poster. So You are the biggest star that's going on in that poster. I mean, in this event. <laughs> 
I love you. Thank you for I love you too. always dealing with this. I will be your hype man till the bitter end, Mark. I got you. Not up or shut up. Not up or shut up. <laughs> We'll be back next week with, I don't know, hopefully no fucking issues. No injuries, no issues, no pains, suffering. By the way, you know, next week, the May 20th, will be the first Saturday, and I'm looking forward to it, in two and a half months that I'm not on the road. I hope the fucking family works. I hope the dogs go to a dog park for the day, and I hope I get to the stare at the ceiling. What's Kelly's number? Let's make sure she doesn't work next week. <laughs> I love everybody. I love Jenks. I love Can't Crush Your Nation. Thank you for this amazing ride, and let's keep going, huh? Let's do it. Let's keep going. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. You're a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them. And if you need help, reach out because you never know.